W. Harley Miller Systems understands the need and desire for reliable and affordable smart home solutions. Secure your home with a security system and keep a close eye on your family. Automate your home with a Control 4 system and have smart technology work as one. Set daily schedules to control your thermostats. Push a button and set the mood for dinner by dimming lights and playing music, or just sit back and enjoy a movie in your own home theater. Put decades of experience to work for you. Visit us at whmsystems.com or call 304-350-1931. We are the Skinner Brothers. Most folks only need a lawyer once or twice in their lives. And when they're injured or in an accident, most people don't know what to do. We get it. It can be overwhelming. Nobody likes to be told, you need a lawyer. But that's why we're here. We want to get you back to your normal life and help you recover. So if you or a loved one has been in an accident, give us a call. Let us figure out how we can get you compensation. Reach us at SkinnerWins.com or Google Skinner Lawyers. We'll treat you like family. It's time for the excitement of NCAA Division II football, featuring the Shepherd Rams and the Pennsylvania State Athletic Conference. Today's play-by-play -play coverage is brought to you by Smallwood Small Insurance Group, W. Harley Miller Systems, Chris Miller and the Dutch Miller Automotive Group, the Marys Group of Ameriprise Financial Advisors, Rocks Local Markets, Parsons Ford, Skinner Accident and Injury Lawyers, Bechtel Jewelers, CMA Honda of Winchester, Brown Funeral Home and Cremations, Orsini's Home Store, Hagerstown Ford, the Berkeley County Health Department, Modern Realty Results, and the Mansion Ferretti Law Firm. Standing by is our TV10 broadcast team. So let's head to the field and get today's pregame show underway. Good morning and welcome to Ram Stadium in Shepherdstown, West Virginia as the 2023 season kick, kicks off at home for the Shepherd University Rams against the Southern Connecticut State University Owls. Nick Verzellini, Travis Smith, happy to have you with us for another season of Rams football. Shepherd coming off of a 13-2 year where the Rams made it all the way to the regional championship and then won the regional and then fell in the semifinals for back-to-back -back seasons as region won champions for Southern Connecticut State. It was a three-win year a year ago, so a disappointing season for them trying to bounce back. And in game one last year, Travis, it was all Shepard, but this is a completely different Shepard team, especially offensively. And that's why you could tell that there's a lot of excitement coming into this season because it hasn't happened too often that it's been this large of a changing of the guard, so to speak, with this Rams football team. But a lot of new faces and a lot, a lot of new places. But one thing has been the consistent throughout Shepard Rams history. They have been able to put out consistent winning football teams. And right now this new group coming in has a chance to prove themselves and make a name for themselves this season, starting with Southern uh, Connecticut State. You look at that those newcomers on offense. The offensive line returns three out of five starters. We know why Pelcano is dealing with an injury right now at left guard, so he may or may not play here today. But for the rest of the season, they'll have him, Chandler Brown, and Ty Lucas returning up front. The newcomers, Brandon Carr and James Bell, have been waiting for their opportunity at center and right tackle. When we get into the skill positions, that's where a lot of the change is. Gone is... Not only Tyson Bajan, the quarterback, but Ronnie Brown at running back. All of the wide receivers from last year, except for Rodney Dorsey, may return, depending on his eligibility situation. Not certain if that's why he is out today, but he is out. And then, of course, tight end uh, is a returner, but he didn't get a lot of playing time in Dustin Fisher. And, and the big situation here is Seth Morgan taking over at quarterback from VMI. The transfer comes down, and Travis, he... he doesn't have numbers that blow you away at VMI, but that was competing at a little bit of a higher level, so maybe he can come in and do some good things for Shepard. And, and that's one of the things with a quarterback position. You're, like, you're so dependent on so many different variables that's going to result in your stat line. So you don't know what the protection was like for him at VMI. You don't know what type of weapons that he had out on the edge. But one thing you do know about this Shepard Rams program is that they have been able to reload at that wide receiver position. So you figure he's going to have more weapons. And you mentioned that offensive line. If you wanted some consistency, if you wanted some continuity, that's where you would want it. And that would be up front with those offensive linemen. And that's something that Shepard has excelled at over the years is that they've been able to develop linemen year after year, able to plug them in. That was a young group last year. Well, like you mentioned, they played a lot of football last year, able to get a lot of experience, and now they're coming out with a lot more confidence this year. And that Shepard Rams offense, they're going to need those big guys up front to really set the tone because they're going to have to open up some holes for some new running backs and give a new quarterback some extra time to look downfield and hit those open targets. 
when you look at the defense for Shepard, this is where the strength of the team. I mean, this is where everybody pretty much returns from last year. The only real question marks will be where they get their pass rush from. Gone are Kyle Smith and Malik Holloway, who were consistent pass rushers for Shepard for the last few seasons. Other than that, you have experience at every other position group. You're expecting them to be pretty strong. Uh, you lose also Devin Lynch, which is a big loss at the linebacker position, but you fill in JT Komayao, who played really well uh, at the end of the year when Dwayne Grantham was hurt. So that's my biggest question when I'm looking at Travis is where's the pass rush going to come from, and we're looking at Kevin Kowser and Malik Forbes to kind of fill those spots. And you mentioned one of the guys that really caught my eye last year, Kevin Kowser. He played mostly at linebacker coming in filling in spot duty here and there, but when he was on the field, he certainly made an impact. He's a player that has tremendous range, can make plays from sideline to sideline. Now they put his hand in the dirt, and now he's going to be able to get after the quarterback. So I'm curious to see what he's able to do because he was a guy that really stood out last year, and also Dwayne Grantham, you mentioned, first team all PSAC East, and he's certainly going to be the leader of that group. Last year had 93 tackles, 52 of those solo, seven tackles for loss. So he's a guy that can get into the backfield. Like we mentioned, Kowser, he was able to get a sack. And plus those interior linemen, you got Nathan Muley at that defensive tackle position had nine tackles for loss and three sacks, so it may not be so much that they get a pass rush from the outside. They may be able to disrupt things with those big defensive tackles up through the middle. Certainly could be the case. Let's take our first break here on the pregame show. On the other side of that break, we'll hear from the head coach of the Shepherd University Rams, Ernie McCook. This is Shepherd University Rams football on TV 10 and WRNR TV on YouTube. Mayhem is everywhere. I'm your new bangs, and you can't stop staring at me. That's it. Just tilt the rearview mirror over here. And while you're checking me out more times in a library book, your car is wandering into that lane over there. More bangs? <laughs> Neat. And if you've got cut rate insurance, you could be paying for this yourself. So get Allstate. Call Martinsburg Allstate agent Gary Kelly today at 304-263-4596. With four new car dealerships and four used car dealerships in three states, Parsons is the largest used car and fastest growing new car dealer in the tri-state area. Take Parsons Ford with huge savings on hundreds of new Fords, financing from 0%, Parsons' goal of financing for all, and Parsons' famous above-market trade-in allowances that help make Parsons number one for used cars, too. See why so many won't buy anywhere but Parsons Ford in Martinsburg. We became number one by making you number one first. Parsons. Mommy, where does flavor come from? Well, um, when people love food, they cook it on a Traeger grill. Meat, corn, even the pie. <laughs> and then the Traeger does the rest, which brings everyone to celebrate this beautiful thing that they've created. Because when you share delicious food with your friends, that's the flavor of life. Shop now and save at Orsini's today. The Palace Lounge in Martinsburg is the place to be. Join us every night to relax and enjoy football or basketball games featuring either the Martinsburg Bulldogs, Shepherd University Rams, or West Virginia Mountaineers. We will have steak night every Wednesday, trip nights every Thursday, and now taco and margarita nights every Tuesday. You can find us on Facebook or call 304-267-7520. The Palace Lounge is located at 1350 Edwin Miller Boulevard in Martinsburg. We welcome you back on the W. Harley Miller Systems pregame show. We'll now get into our coach's interview brought to you by Parsons Ford. They're located at 1400 Shepherdstown Road or online at ParsonsFord.com. They became number one by making you number one first, Parsons. We're now joined by the head coach of the Shepherd Rams, Ernie McCook. Coach, another season for you, kicking off the year against Southern Connecticut State just like last season. Uh, what are some things that stand out to you about them? Well, you know what? They're a tough, hard-nosed, gritty football team. They, they, you can tell they play extremely hard. Uh, they're well coached. Uh, I think they're going to be hungry to come down here and find a way to get a win in Rams Stadium. So we're, we're going to have to plan for the unexpected with Southern Connecticut. They have a new coordinator on offense. Uh, I think they could have some new wrinkles defensively. They have some new personnel that we're learning about, a quarterback. So we got a, we have a lot of things we have to prepare for. We've had a tremendous camp. I feel like our staff has done a great job preparing us from the end of last season to where we are now to play this game on Saturday. You have a new look for a lot of your offense, especially defense returns a lot of guys. What have you seen from some of these new guys offensively? 
You know, we're really excited, in fact, with what Malachi Brown is going to bring to the table playing running back and things we'll be able to do with him. I think the O-line has uh, stepped up. Uh, you know, Brandon Carr has stepped up in place of Joey Fisher. Uh, um, James Bell is stepping up in place of Adam Steele, and then we've got the other guys back. Uh, I'm really pleased with how they're playing. You know, the tight end position is going to be different, but we, we're going to do that with a group of about three guys, Jack Rosnich, Dustin Fisher, and um, Brian Jester. I think they'll do, they're going to do some great things for us. Um, really excited about the receiving core that transferred in in the spring and what we've built with that. Jonathan Taylor, uh, Jeremiah Taylor, I'm sorry, Jeremiah Taylor, um, Barry Hill, and Cameron Dorner are look really strong there. We're having Rodney Dorsey, too, available will be key. Um, I like where the offense is at. You know, obviously Seth Morgan has been getting all the reps with the ones at quarterback, and, and that's a tough spot. You know, he's got big shoes to fill, but we're also aware anybody who would be the starting quarterback there would have big shoes to fill. So we've got to do a good job collectively as an offense, as a defense, special teams, to be able to have a team win and put it all together, all three phases together. What are some things that Seth brings to the quarterback position and why you guys were interested in bringing him in? Well, Seth is, brings experience. He had some significant starts down at VMI. Uh, he's played the game. Uh, he's a big physical guy. He understands the game. He's bought into Shepherd University football from the day he walked on this campus. Uh, he has shown that he understands the history, the tradition, what he's up against, what he needs to do. Um, and I think that watching him grow offensively through spring ball, the summer, and where we are in fall camp, I feel really good about how he's playing. Also, I'm really, really excited about Lech Powell. Uh, Lech Powell is from Bishop McDevitt, his third year in our program. Uh, you can see him growing as a player and doing some really good things. Defensively, you guys uh, return a lot on yep. the defensive side of the ball. That's got to be exciting. And can that be, do you think, the strength of the team this year, the defense? Uh, absolutely. I think our defense is going to be outstanding. I'm really excited about the defensive front. Jack Baxter's back with us. We have Nathan Muley, Matt Benarski. Um, you know, we've got a good group there. Michael Forbes, linebacking core, Dwayne Grantham, Harold O'Neill, uh, and JT. Uh, Kome, I, I, I think we're going to be great with him. Uh, in the secondary, the two safeties, watch Anilio Pena, number four. Anilio is going to be around the football making a lot of plays. Christian McDowell does a great job at the free safety spot. Corners are going to be, we're about three deep there. We feel really good about that. Getting to start the year at home this year. You haven't done that since 2019. How exciting is that? It's always fun to play in Rams Stadium, whether you're playing at the beginning of the year or the end of the year. A home game here is special. Um, and I, I can't wait till we kick this thing off on Saturday. Tyson will be back uh, for his breakfast before the game, yeah. so a lot of excitement around the program heading into week one. Yeah, I, I, you know what's interesting? I, I just got off the phone with Joey Fisher, too. He's going to be here for the game. Tyson will be here for the game. Hopefully Ronnie Brown will be back in town. Brian Walker we will be able to hear about those guys' experience as they journey through the NFL, uh, their NFL experience. Um, really, obviously, you know, it, I, everybody is aware of where we are with Tyson and what's happening with Tyson. What a, what a great representation of this university, our football program, and actually the Eastern Panhandle. Everybody should be really proud of what he does and how he operates, and uh, I'm really, I can't wait to see him uh, and then hear about his ex Bears experience, you know, and talk to him about that. And I appreciate the fact that he's willing to do this scholarship fundraiser for us at breakfast. I think it's going to be a lot of fun, and you know we're looking forward to it. All right, Coach, thank you. Good luck this week. Thank you very much, guys. And that concludes our coach interview brought to you by Parsons Ford, located at 1400 Shepherdstown Road in Martinsburg, or online at ParsonsFord.com. They became number one by making you number one first, Parsons. This is Shepherd Rams Football on TV10. At Dutch Miller Automotive, we've grown quite a bit over the last 60 years, but our core principles remain the same. We believe in treating our customers and our team members like friends and family. And we see it as our obligation to give back to all the communities we are so fortunate to do business in. In just West Virginia alone, we've grown from one location on the west end of Huntington to 10 rooftops employing more than 500 Mountaineers. Check out the inventory from all of our stores at DutchMillerAuto.com. Dutch Miller Automotive Group, West Virginia proud. 
Ollie's VIP Northside is the best spot to catch all your favorite teams. Join us Monday for Dollar Wings and Monday Night Football. Thursdays on the patio for the Cornhole Tourney. Friday Night Lights with Happy Hour Specials or Saturdays during or after the college games for Steak Night. Get a ribeye or New York Steak for just $26.95. Ollie's has great food and drink menus too along with 17 TVs to watch any game of your choice from anywhere at the bar or their outdoor patio and fire pit. So stop by and see for yourself today at 36 Veronica Drive in Martinsburg. That's Ollie's VIP Northside. We'll see you for the game. Hi, Kresha Hornby here. Larry DeMarco, broker of Modern Realty Results, believes he has some of the best real estate agents in the Eastern Panhandle. Agents at Modern Realty Results have years of experience and knowledge of the local real estate market. Agents within the office work as a team to provide quality customer service. We strive to always ensure client satisfaction through handling every transaction with honesty and integrity, all while offering competitive rates. Modern Realty Results is veteran-owned and managed. Please call us at 262-4222, modernrealtyresults.com. The Skinner family has been representing West Virginians for more than 50 years. We've changed the name of our firm to Skinner Accident and Injury Lawyers because we want to be clear about what we do. We represent people who have been in car, truck, and other catastrophic accidents. We're here to be a voice for the injured and vulnerable, and we take that job seriously with deep commitment to serving our clients wherever they are. Just Google Skinner Accident Lawyer or visit SkinnerWins.com. We'll treat you like family. Back to Ram Stadium. Shepard opening its season up against Southern Connecticut State here on the W. Harley Miller Systems pregame show. W. Harley Miller Systems providing custom integration services like home and auto, home and office automation, home theater networking, audio vi- video distribution, and more. Call 304 350 1931 or visit whmsystems.com. We talked about Shepard in our first segment of the pregame show. We'll now talk about their opponent. Southern Connecticut State University, the Owls, Shepard, and Southern Connecticut State opened up last season on a Thursday night at Southern Connecticut. It was a 48-7 win for the Rams, but this Southern Connecticut team got better throughout the season, was competitive against New Haven, who would come to Shepardstown in the playoffs last year and, and play them tough. So it's a team, Travis, that really has a lot of unknown, typically have a lot of transfers, and that's the case starting at their quarterback and Keith Ridley and a few others on the offensive side of the ball. And then defensively, they return a few names that we recognize from last year. And you mentioned the quarterback, Keith Ridley, 6'4", 230 pounds. So he certainly passes the eye test, and he makes his way to Southern Connecticut via Boston College, and then he had a brief stop at Bryant University. And that's one of the charming things about calling Division II football is that you see a lot of young men that have had a lot of experience like traveling around seeing different programs so curious to see what Ridley's able to bring to the game and you talked about defense and the first name that jumps off the sheet is Hassan Dominic the inside linebacker 5'11 220 pound grad student last season led the Owls for the second year in a row with 86 tackles 43 of those solo nine tackles for loss and two sacks and he really stood out last year versus Shepard had nine tackles in that ball game one of those solos so that's certainly going to be the strength of that Owls defense is the inside linebackers Dominic and also Jaleel Watson Look at some other returners that we recognize from Southern Connecticut State. Tylen Papalo returns a wide receiver along with tight end Tim O'Shea. And you mentioned kind of the key names there on defense. That linebacking core has a lot of guys that made plays for them last year, like Dominic, Watson, DeGello also returning from last season. A little bit different up front with the D-line. And the O-line returns a lot from last year, and it's still a pretty young up offensive line as well, Travis. So there's some positives for Southern Connecticut State to potentially build on some things heading into this season. Looking at that O-line, not the most big, brawny group that you have up front. They range anywhere from 6'4 to 265, 6'3, 280. The biggest is the center, Liam Flight Sr. at 6'5, 315 pounds, but an undersized offensive line. But it works out today because they're going up against the undersized defensive line. Yeah. So right now, it's going to be a good matchup up front. It's going to be curious who's going to be able to win that matchup in the trenches for them. We mentioned Tylon Papalo. First team all Northeast 10 last year. He had 46 catches for 694 yards, five touchdowns. Also a very dangerous punt returner. Had 11 punt returns for 194 yards and a touchdown and was fourth in the NE10 last year in all-purpose yards. So that's certainly something that that Rams secondary is going to have to be cognizant of throughout today's game. All right, we'll take another break. On the other side of that break, we will hear 
from the Shepherd players, Anilio Pena, as well as Ty Lucas. This is Shepherd University Rams football on TV10 and WRNR TV on YouTube. W. Harley Miller Systems understands the need and desire for reliable and affordable smart home solutions. Secure your home with a security system and keep a close eye on your family. Automate your home with a Control 4 system and have smart technology work as one. Set daily schedules to control your thermostats. Push a button and set the mood for dinner by dimming lights and playing music, or just sit back and enjoy a movie in your own home theater. Put decades of experience to work for you. Visit us at whmsystems.com or call 304-350-1931. Before the invitations and the dress, the flowers, cake, candles, or vows, there is an answer to a question proposed with a ring. Bechtel Jewelers knows that an important part of your wedding happens before the I do's. We're a diamond store with an engagement and bridal jewelry selection that's both exciting and accessible. On the big day, there's everything else and there's the ring. Make sure you get this one right at Bechtel Jewelers in Inwood. When will I be able to retire? How do I make the most of the money I have? How can I leave a lasting legacy to my loved ones? I'm John Everson, Private Wealth Advisor with the Marius Group, a private wealth advisory practice of Ameriprise Financial Services Incorporated. Call us today at 304-263-4343 to help you make the most of your financial future. Our office is located at 1270 Winchester Avenue, Martinsburg, West Virginia. Ameriprise Financial Services Incorporated member FINRA and SIPC. At Dutch Miller Automotive, we've grown quite a bit over the last 60 years, but our core principles remain the same. We believe in treating our customers and our team members like friends and family, and we see it as our obligation to give back to all the communities we are so fortunate to do business in. In just West Virginia alone, we've grown from one location on the west end of Huntington to 10 rooftops employing more than 500 Mountaineers. Check out the inventory from all of our stores at DutchMillerAuto.com. Dutch Miller Automotive Group, West Virginia proud. We now go in the huddle, brought to you by the Marius Group and Ameriprise Financial Advisors, John Everson and Phil McCoy. Stop by 1270 Winchester Avenue in Martinsburg or call 304-263-4343. We're now joined by Shepherd offensive lineman Ty Lucas. Ty, uh, you're back on the offensive line again this year. How's the offense looked? Uh, obviously a lot of changes with the skill positions, but the O-line returns a lot. Mm -hmm. I know we, uh, we missed out on Adam and Joey. We don't have them come returning. Uh, but I feel like Brandon and uh, James are adding a big, uh, a big skill set to our offensive line. Brandon being with having the size and James with just having the knowledge. He's a real smart guy, knows all the plays inside and out. And then with the uh, new guys in the skill positions and then with um, Seth uh, bringing, uh, being a new quarterback, I think he's going to be an amazing guy to put out there. Seeing what Joey, Ronnie, and Tyson have achieved this year, in particular for you, uh, Joey, going to the next level as an offensive lineman from Shepard, does that – maybe encourage you to potentially try to pursue something after college? Uh, it gives me the idea of it, but mainly I'm here to get my degree and then start my business. I know uh, I just heard that Joey just got signed to the Steelers practice squad, so I'm happy for him. How do you feel about the offensive line and, and some of those new pieces going into a little bit more detail with those guys and how, how they've stepped in as leaders? Well, I know James has stepped up a lot because last year we, like, well, not comparing it to last year, but uh, James has been doing all the calls. Like he's been very like helpful even to the to the younger offensive line because uh, we got four new freshmen on the line. I'm pretty sure, and he's just been a real good guy helping them out because he's just a smart, intelligent dude. And Southern Connecticut State this week, a team that you guys played last season. What are some things you're expecting out of them? Uh, I know they they don't have any returning nose guard from last season, so we're kind of in like in the mist right there. But I know we're doing. We have our key players that we're going to look out for, and then. Uh, I pay attention to, so I, you know, I can't give all the details out. <laughs> Open of the season at home, first time doing that for Shepard since 2019. How exciting is it to play at home? And you're a Martinsburg guy as well, so you know this is really your home. Uh, it's honestly the best thing in the world. I, I know my past two seasons here, we have opened up at home, but just walking out, just with the whole team, and everything behind you, and then just seeing all the fans out in the stands is actually like a magical thing. All right, Ty, thank you. Good luck this week. I right, appreciate it. Thank you. Now joined by Shepard Ram safety, Anilio Pena. Anilio, another season for you here at Shepard. You've moved around quite a bit. Uh, looks like you're going to be playing a little bit more safety this year. How do you feel about your ability to move around on the defense and play a lot of different positions for this team? Uh, it's great. It's a great opportunity to be able to, last year, with the last two years playing the field, uh, you get a couple of different concepts now in the boundary. It's a, it's a short, short space, but playing deep, 
it's, uh, it's fun being able to play on the back end and uh, disrupt some passes and things like that and be able to um, help out my team. It's great. Oh. A lot of returns from last year's defense to this year's defense. How does it feel to have the defense returning and have that uh, chemistry playing together? Uh, it's great. It's great. So uh, since all of our all, most of our returners are still here, it's just um, just sh sh knocking off the rust. Uh, it's not too much of uh, trying to build that chemistry. It's already here. So that, that's a great thing to have. And um, just now, just bring. Uh, tuning it all in for uh, game day. What do you think are some of the strengths of the defense this season? Uh, definitely uh, run stop. I think we're, we're, uh, we have a lot of uh, people that are run hungry and just want to go hit people. So we're definitely should be, we, we definitely should be keyed in on the run, stopping the run, and uh, things like that, I think. You guys opened up the season against Southern Connecticut State this year. You played them last year to open up the year. What are some things that stand out to you about them? Uh, they have a lot of returners, so their whole entire line is uh, returners. They have their um, their number one receiver, number three. He's back in the slot, uh, and a couple new guys, a new quarterback, uh, a couple new uh, wide receivers. So it should be it should be um, relatively the same because they have their uh, their same offensive uh, coordinator. So we we should get the same plays and concepts as of, as far as that, but. It may be a little bit different with a new quarterback back there. You're opening up at home. First time Shepard opens up at home since 2019. How exciting is that? Uh, really exciting. It's, it's always fun to play at home uh, with a big crowd and especially to, uh, to open it off. Since we haven't done it in so, such a long time, it's definitely going to be fun. All right, Neilio, good luck. All right, thank you. That concludes our player interviews portion of the W. Harley Miller Systems pregame show. When we return, we will have more. This is Shepard University Rams football on TV 10. The Honda HRV, CRV, Pilot, Passport, and Ridgeline. They all have one thing in common. They never back off from a challenge. Available with all wheel drive, the Honda SUV lineup has the performance you can count on and the capability to amaze. It's no wonder Kelly Blue Book's KBB.com named Honda the 2022 best value brand. CMA's Honda of Winchester, 3985 Valley Pike. CMA, moving lives forward. Based on 2022 brand image awards from Kelly Blue Book, visit KBB.com for more information. W. Harley Miller Systems understands the need and desire for reliable and affordable smart home solutions. Secure your home with a security system and keep a close eye on your family. Automate your home with a Control 4 system and have smart technology work as one. Set daily schedules to control your thermostats. Push a button and set the mood for dinner by dimming lights and playing music, or just sit back and enjoy a movie in your own home theater. Put decades of experience to work for you. Visit us at whmsystems.com or call 304-350-1931. One of the questions lawyers get asked the most is, what is my case worth? I'm Steven Skinner and this is my brother Andrew with Skinner Accident and Injury Lawyers. The truth is, it's very difficult for a lawyer to pinpoint a number because every case is different. We get to know each situation and we'll give you an idea of what your case is worth and why. The sooner we get involved, the better we can do getting you the compensation you deserve. Google Skinner Lawyers or go to SkinnerWins.com. We'll treat you like family. With four new car dealerships and four used car dealerships in three states, Parsons is the largest used car and fastest growing new car dealer in the tri-state area. Take Parsons Ford with huge savings on hundreds of new Fords, financing from 0%, Parsons' goal of financing for all, and Parsons' famous above-market trade-in allowances that help make Parsons number one for used cars, too. See why so many won't buy anywhere but Parsons Ford in Martinsburg. We became number one by making you number one first. Parsons. We welcome you back here to Rams Stadium as things are getting started a little bit early here on this Saturday afternoon. Shepard taking on Southern Connecticut State to open up the season. Back deep for the Rams. Malachi Brown. As the kick is away and fielded here at on the near side for Shepard. And they get it out to about the 25-yard line. I believe that was Barry Hill on the kick return for the Rams, number one, the West Virginia State University transfer. So Shepard will start with the football, and we'll see the new error with Seth Morgan. Travis, what are your keys to the game brought to you by the Dutch Miller Automotive Group, home of friends and family pricing? 
Well, one of the things that the Rams want to do is let that offensive line get a little bit of confidence early on in the game. So I think they're going to have to go to the ground early and let Malachi Brown try to set the tone a little bit so you don't have to put the full load of the offense on new quarterback Seth Morgan. So rely on your strength and that continuity up front with those big offensive linemen. Jeremiah Taylor, the wide receiver to the far side, as we have a whistle for Shepard. Looks like it's going to be a delay of game call. Not the way you want to start the season. Certainly not the way you want to start a game, but. Our opening kickoff was brought to you by CMA Honda of Winchester, located at 3985 Valley Pike. CMA moving lives forward. As the Rams now have it first down and 15. They'll hand it off to Malachi Brown here on the near side. Brown shedding off tacklers, gets a good block from Hill. And heads out short of the first down marker. Gallo coming over to make the tackle for Southern Connecticut State. And a stretch zone play to get the game started for the Rams running behind big left tackle Chandler Brown. Malachi Brown doing a good job of pressing outside and then putting his foot in the ground and getting north and south. That's something you know Shepard's no, never lacking for speed, but what you want are those running backs that's going to have the patience to see that hole open up inside, being able to attack it. Morgan in the shotgun with trips to the far side. Comes out throwing. It's complete on the far side to the new wide receiver, one of those new wide receivers, Jeremiah Taylor there on the outside, a guy that we're expecting, to, or based on what we've heard, expecting some big things from them. Transfer coming in from Fairmont State. Played in eight games last year, racking up 14 catches for 261 yards and a touchdown. And he has the speed to take the top off the defense. His long last year went for 70 yards. Rams in the pistol formation as Hill goes in motion. And it will be another screen pass. This time Taylor is wrapped up in the backfield. Coming up and making the tackle is Chris White, the corner for Southern Connecticut State. As That's a nice play by the Owls. Chris White, the 5'10", 195-pound junior from New Rochelle, New York. It appears with Rodney Dorsey out of the lineup. Cordell Batten, the brother of Clayton Batten, getting the slot receiver reps. Barry Hill, the receiver here to the near side. Taylor goes to the far side. Brown remains the back to the right of Morgan. Morgan looking to throw here on second down. Seth steps up in the pocket. Now throws on the run, complete to Taylor, right at the sticks on the other side of midfield. Down to the 44-yard line goes Jeremiah Taylor. It's a first down, Shep. With 13.04 to go in this opening quarter. A good job of that Rams offense of going off script. When Seth Morgan initially dropped back, nothing was open, but he was able to extend the play, rolling out to his left, and his wide receivers did a good job of turning and running the open space, and Morgan able to deliver his first, well, excuse me, his second completion of today's game. A well, third completion. Well, third, there we go. Just the second one for positive yardage. <laughs> yeah, there we go. First down and 10 for the Rams on the 44-yard line. And one thing we're noticing earlier, early, Travis, this is a lot different formations in terms of a lot more power on the field, both tight ends in the game, a lot of pistol early, which we saw a lot more shotgun in the Bajan era. We got a timeout on Shepard's side. We'll take a 30-second break. This is Shepard University Rams football on TV 10 and WRNR TV on YouTube, 12.30 to go in the first quarter. No score. Remember when you were a little kid and saw your first deer? Oh, how cute. As an adult, maybe you've had a different experience. Where'd that come from? Bambi mess up your dream machine? Call Cody's Auto Body today at 304-901-4777 and get the work done right the first time. Cody's Auto Body, 851 Wilston Street in Martinsburg, has a team of auto body professionals with a lifetime of experience putting your ride back together again, regardless of how it got that way. Cody's Auto Body. Now the timeout, Shepard moving the football, 12.30 to go in this first quarter. Rams opening drive, ball on the 44-yard line of Southern Connecticut State. Morgan in the pistol formation with two receivers to the far side. Fisher going in motion from left to right. Fake it to Brown and a roll out to the right, throwing intended for Hill and out of bounds and incomplete. Hodden on the coverage for Southern Connecticut State. They'll be second and ten. That's something that you can do to settle your quarterback down early is get him outside of the pocket and let him make some easy throws on the run that time. Just leading Hill a little bit too much to the outside, but you see the Rams are trying to use that run game, wear that defense down, and give the quarterback some easy play action looks 
Rolling out of the pocket. Taylor to the near side. Hill and Batten to the far side. Brown remains the back. They'll give it to Malachi. Play was initially blown up. A Malachi Brown making moves and getting out of bounds near the first down marker as DeGello came in and caused the play to have to be bounced to the outside. And Malachi Brown already showing that shiftiness, the converted wide receiver. Doing some good things for the Rams here early down, early on. It will be third down and about two for Shepard. The 36, 37 of Southern Connecticut State, 36. Morgan hands it off to Brown on third and two. He lowers the shoulder, gets a push from the offensive line. It's going to be close, but I think he had the first down. It's going to be close. Looks like he may be just a little bit short. Looking at the line, Judge, closest to us. Yeah, where they mark it, it's about... Yeah, it's about a foot short. Yeah. They're going to go ahead and call a fourth down. Malachi Brown did a good job of just sticking his nose up in there. 5'11", 185 pounds. Big banger, but not a big banger, but certainly showing that he's willing to try to go get the tough yards in between the tackles. Jack Rosnage, the converted defensive tackle, is in at fullback as Shepard runs a read option, and Morgan is stuffed in the backfield. Making the tackle for Southern Connecticut State is Brian Barnes, the outside linebacker, to blow that play up. It's a turnover on downs for Shepard. And the Rams' defense will have the football, or will come out, and Southern Connecticut State now has the football. So, Travis, kind of an interesting play. Not certain about Morgan's running ability. I know he ran for a touchdown when he was at VMI against Marshall back in 2019. I was actually on the call for that game. (laughs) But now we get to see this new look Southern Connecticut State team. And they're coming out under center. Ridley sending men in motion. Gray is the running back here on first down and 10. And they'll hand it off to Gray. And he is stopped after maybe a yard leading the way for Shepard on that one. Harold O'Neill filling in for the injured Dwayne Grantham. We were at practice on Wednesday. Grantham was practicing, but not out there to begin this drive. O'Neill taking over. And it, and it may be a calculated risk by that Rams coaching staff, knowing that you're going to need Grantham down the stretch, maybe just trying to rest him here early on, feeling that they have the superior team to the Owls. Second and nine for Southern Connecticut State. Ridley takes the snap. He's under some pressure. Throws incomplete. Papalo has it. On the other side of midfield. Looks like Dante Harrison in coverage, or I'm sorry, that was for Shepard. Christian McDowell in coverage. It's a first down for Southern Connecticut State as they move the ball to the 45 yard line of Shepard. 10.25 to go in this first quarter, still no score. The Rams drive. Uh, ends in a turnover on downs and Southern Connecticut State with its first drive. O'Shea going in motion from right to left. Here's the handoff to Gray running left. And he is stacked up after a short game. Got about two or three. With like Kowser and Bednarski coming up to make that tackle. Southern Connecticut trying to get Gray established early on. The junior transfer coming over from Merrimack College. Some tough running here so far. That Rams defensive front has been pretty stout. Second down and eight from the 43. Again, O'Shea in motion. Ridley takes the snap, drops back, throws far sideline, and caught. Como Yao in coverage. It's Tim O'Shea, the tight end with the reception. Just a short gain. It will be third down. And O'Shea had some success last year in his game versus the Rams. He had three catches for 23 yards. Also had two touchdowns last season. So certainly a weapon. You see how they like to move him around, more of an H-back than your true tight end. Won't be on the line too much. Usually they like to send him in motion or be that kick-out block when they do that zone read up front. Ridley under center. 
Third down and about five from the 40 of Shepard. They'll hand it to Gray, and Gray is stuffed. Dante Harrison, along with a few others, in on the tackle for Shepard. Amari Terry and Harold Harold O'Neill coming up to make that stop for the Rams, and it will be fourth down. Kind of an interesting play call there, Travis, on third and five when you really haven't had any success running the football. You go to a stretch play. And it's something where you see both teams are trying to – keep it conservative here early on not wanting to risk it and make that big mistake but as soon as I say that the Owls line up for a fourth and five so perhaps they were using that play to set up something later on in today's game but early gamble here early on but they're already in the Rams territory so why not go for it and see if you can jump out to an early lead fourth and five from the 40 Ridley rolling to the left throws complete on the far side I believe he has a first down over there making the catch is Ryan Souls. Yeah, Ryan it down. Souls. So senior wide receiver from Mount Vernon, New York. So on fourth and five, the risk pays off. And if Bajan was still the quarterback, no way they go for it there, I don't think. <laughs> but you'd rather rather try to pin him back. But in this new era, Southern Connecticut State being aggressive and it works out for him. So we have a first down and 10 from the 32. Gray is the back, single back formation. Receiver going in motion from right to left. They'll run the jet sweep with Gadsen. And Gadsen. Pena able to come up and make the yards. tackle. Did a good job of fighting off the block and coming up and making that because the wide receiver had it. Looked like he had a hole if he was able to cut it back, but. Pena doing a good job of shedding that block, coming up, making the tackle. Pena listed as a safety, but. Certainly not afraid to get down in the box and make some plays in the run game. Very physical player. Another injury report for Shepard. We were wondering why Clayton Batten wasn't on the two deep. He's actually out for the season with a torn ACL. So that's a big loss. Shepard was expecting to have both of its corners back from last year. And Dante Harrison and Clayton Batten. But Batten will be out for the year with the ACL injury. So rolling to the right is Ridley. Ridley lurks to run. Lowers the shoulder. He is met. On the play by Omari Terry. Positive gain. It'll be third and short for Southern Connecticut State. Right now you see Southern Connecticut, they're looking just to manage the game. They're not looking to, for big chunk plays. If they can just whittle away at that defense, two and three yards here, so that way you get into third and manageable or on this drive, fourth and manageable, you do a good job. And most importantly, you keep that Rams offense off of the field, which is usually a Good rule of thumb to follow because the Rams have shown over the years that they have no problem putting up points and the Owls not wanting to give them that opportunity by maintaining possession themselves. Third and about two. Ridley turns it off to Gray, and Gray is stuffed. Good defense. Amari Terry. Terry in there again. It looks like Bednarski as well leading the way for Shepard on third and two. It has already been over a six-minute drive. I'm sorry, over a four-and-a-half-minute drive for Southern Connecticut State, so they are killing a lot of clock. They're probably going to go for it again here on fourth down and two for the Owls. But, yeah, so far the Shepard defense has been very tough against that run. Gray not really getting a whole lot of room. Passing game has been successful on the short passes. Ridley looking to throw here on fourth and two. In the shotgun. Gray the back. They'll roll him to the left. They'll throw complete to Souls. And it is short of the first down, I believe. No, they'll oh. give him the first down. Very close play there on the far side, but they just keep running those sprint out to the left, and it's been successful. Running that flood, and Ridley early on showing a very good aptitude of rolling out to his offhand side and throwing passes that are on target. The wide receiver is doing a good job of getting past the sticks and settling down in the soft spot of the zone. So right now the Owls having some early success, like you said, running those floods, rolling the quarterback out of the pocket and giving him some easy throws. First and 10 from the 21-yard line. Owls just outside the red zone. Play action, roll it to the right this time. Throwing and incomplete. That was dangerous. In coverage for Shepard was Tyron Hudson. 
There were no good options on that one, and Ridley was able to dodge a bullet. He was kind of caught in between thoughts on that play. Had a receiver on a short route, a wide receiver on the intermediate route, and looked like he put the ball right in between the two of them. Luckily for him, there were no Rams defenders able to make a play on the ball. Excuse me, that was Robbie Hart in coverage for Shepard, number 25. Newcomer on this defense, again, with batting out for the year. It's going to be tough to... Or you have to have some corners step up, and it looks like Hart's going to step up as like a nickel roll for Shepard. As Ridley in the shotgun on second down and 10 from the 21, it looked like movement up front from Southern Connecticut State. And this being the first game, you can imagine there's probably going to be some penalties out there. As far as we already have one delay delay of game for Shepard and this time a false start for Southern Connecticut. So you're going to have some of these miscues early on as guys have first game jitters. Our first quarter brought to you on TV 10 and WRNR TV on YouTube by Smallwood and Small Insurance in Martinsburg. Your total insurance solution at 121 Administrative Drive. Call 304-263-3361. As well as the Skinner Law Firm, injuring consumer rights lawyers. As here's a rollout from Ridley. Ridley looking to run. Ridley inside the 10, inside the 5, dives for the pylon. And he's short of the end zone. Down to the 1 goes Keith Ridley. And That's a, a weird... player down for Southern Connecticut State. A weird play because it looked like none of the referees wanted to be the one that made the call on that play. Skinner Wall Firm representing accident and injury claims for over 50 years. Go to SkinnerWins.com. We have an injury. We'll take a 30-second break. And we'll be back after this 30-second break. This is Shepherd University Rams football on TV 10 and WRNR TV on YouTube. As a lifelong Jefferson County resident, Paul Espinosa has been a champion for the Eastern Panhandle. Paul is the effective, fiscally conservative voice we need in the West Virginia Senate. He's fought for job creation, student-centered education, the rights of the unborn, protecting our family farms, and was a leader in passing income tax relief for all West Virginians. When residents of the 16th Senatorial District cast their votes for their next senator, the choice is clear. Paul Espinosa for West Virginia State Senate. Paid for by Espinosa for Senate, Mary C. Espinosa, Treasurer. We welcome you back here to Ram Stadium as Tim O'Shea being helped off the field, the Southern Connecticut tight end, so down to the one-yard line as Southern Connecticut State will be first and goal from the one. After the Keith Ridley scramble, shedding off tacklers gets them down to the one-yard line. Gray is the back here on first and goal. Souls is the receiver to the far side. Ridley. Takes the snap, hands it off to Souls, and they're into the end zone touchdown. As Ridley was not in a quarterback, it was Ethan Davis there, the 6'2", 180 redshirt freshman taking the snap that time. But Southern Connecticut State takes the early 6-0 lead on the Gray touchdown run with 4.05 to go in this first quarter. Gray that time able to press the hole of the middle, then bounce it out to the left side, running behind big left tackle Carew Gomes, the 6'4", 265-pound junior. Orland Lopez on to attempt the extra point, and it is up. And it is good. 7-0 Southern Connecticut State. The Owls strike first here with 4.05 to go in this first quarter. We'll take a one-minute break and return with more Shepherd Ranch football here on TV10 and WRNR TV on YouTube. This is Eric at Hagerstown Ford. Over the last decade, the way we buy things have evolved. Now, you get on your phone, click Want It, and it shows up at your front door. At Hagerstown Ford, it is that convenient. We've changed the car buying experience on the I-81 corridor forever. And with a return policy better than Walmart, there's absolutely no reason to buy a newer used car, truck, or SUV anywhere else. Just like Amazon, Hagerstown Ford will deliver the vehicle to you, where you are, and on your time. And if you don't want it, return it, no questions asked. Why waste your time at a car dealership playing the dumb back-and-forth games? Besides, we hate it more than you do. I assure you, no dealership from Winchester, Virginia to Washington, D.C. will beat our price. No dealership from Chambersburg, Pennsylvania to Baltimore, Maryland will beat our price. And no other dealership will allow you to return it if you don't want it. 
Hagerstown Ford absolutely provides the best experience at the best price. Visit HagerstownFord.com to schedule your VIP experience. Click on the vehicle you want and get your new ride delivered to you at no risk. See dealer for details. Welcome you back here to Rams Stadium. 7-0 Southern Connecticut State. Rams back to return the kick. I believe it's going to be Brown this time, taking it from around the 6-yard line. Malachi Brown across the 25. Breaks off a tackler. Brown still on his feet. Malachi Brown out to about the 35 before he's finally brought down. Malachi Brown showing his best Ronnie Brown impersonation on the kickoff return, nearly breaking through. It's 7-0 Southern Connecticut State. They take the ball in about six and a half minutes and drive it down the field to get on the board first with the Elijah Gray touchdown run. Our scoring drive summary is brought to you by Paul Espinoza for State Senate, an effective, fiscally conservative voice for the 16th District. So it'll be first and 10 for Shepard with 3.55 to go in this first quarter, 7-0 Southern Connecticut State. Important drive early on here for the Rams. You don't want to force it. You certainly want to have a turnover. But you need to have some progress. Morgan throws complete across the 40-yard line and making the catch, his first catch as a Ram, is Cordell Batten. Was Brian Barnes in there on the tackle? The six foot two, 220 pound junior. This will be second down and about five for Shepard after the five-yard gain on the reception. Three receivers going to that far side. And Taylor, Hill, and Batten. Brown remains the back. He'll now go in motion and a whistle from the officials. And that Owls defense is showing a lot of confidence in their linebackers. They're staying in their base 3-4, even though Shepard's in a trips look. All they do is bump out that outside linebacker to cover up that number two wide receiver. Had to reset the game clock. So that's good. After Shepard gets a positive gain on first down, don't have to go backwards with a penalty. So 3.45 now on the game clock. Second down and five for the Rams from the 40. Brown goes in motion again. And Morgan throws to Brown and it falls incomplete. Bring up third down. That time Rams offense trying to use Malachi Brown's hands like we mentioned earlier, a converted wide receiver. So you figure he's going to have exceptional hands out of the backfield, but that's a tough angle to throw when you have that wide res- that running back motioning straight out to that trips look that's trying to get up in the space and make some plays happen. And if that pass isn't up a little bit higher, Malachi Brown to get it's going to be tough for him to be running towards the sidelines full speed and catch that ball down around by his ankles. Morgan takes a snap. He's under pressure from DeGallo and throws an incomplete. They're going to say the pass was intended for Malachi, Malachi Brown. Brown. He was somewhat in the area, but it'll be fourth down and five, and Shepard will be forced to punt. That Owls defense has had success dialing up those pressures on third down, and Seth Morgan not able to extend the play that time. Took a shot to avoid the sack and threw the ball away, and luckily for the Rams offense, not an intentional grounding, but so far the Rams offense having a bit of trouble getting on track here early on. It's all newcomers. Uh, this is to be expected. Ryan Barrick will punt for Shepard. Back deep is Papalo for Southern Connecticut State. Barrick's punt is a high kick. And fair caught at around the 20-yard line by Papalo, and that's where Southern Connecticut State will take over. So we'll keep it here. Shepard trails 7 nothing here in this first quarter, 3.29 to go for the first quarter. The Owls taking back over offensively. Ridley back in the game, so might no been, injury there. It's just Davis, I don't know, maybe he's the red zone quarterback. Yeah, it might have been something <laughs> where it's almost like, like a wild t- wildcat type package, or Mr. Ridley may have been a little bit tired after that long run <laughs> to the end zone. Couldn't he's hand the four, ball off. Yeah, yeah. He, he's 6'4", 230. <laughs> might have needed a shot of Gatorade to get back out there. First and 10 from the 20. This power football of Southern Connecticut State continues. Rams showing blitz. They'll hand it off to Gray, and Gray doesn't find much room. Gets it across the 20 to about the 21-yard line before he's brought down on the play. Looked like, again, O'Neal leading the charge. Gain of about two. He's second down and eight. 
And not too often nowadays that you see teams lining up in 21 personnel, two running backs, one tight end, just running the ball downhill. But the Owls have shown early on that they're trying to use a ball control, game-managing style of game just to try to keep that Rams offense off the field. You don't want to get that group into a rhythm, and the best way to do that is to keep them on the sidelines. And eventually those holes could open up if you keep running it and tiring out the defense. That's certainly one of the benefits of the running game. Here it is again, Gray running hard, brought down by Koma Yao and Kowser on the play. And, I mean, Elijah Gray is a pretty physical runner. You can already tell based on what we've seen. He's five foot eight, but he's 215 pounds. That's a bowling ball. That, that, that's a low. Third and about three for the Owls, moving the ball to the 27-yard line. 2.16 to go in this first quarter, 7 nothing. Owls on top. And you mentioned one of the benefits of, of consistently running the ball, one right now. Third and three. You're in third and manageable, and your play-action pass has been set up. Ridley in the gun. He'll go Gray again. Gray runs into the line of scrimmage, but keeps moving forward and has the first down across the 30. Up to about the 32-yard line. It'll be first and 10 for the Owls. And when you continue to run the ball like this, it pays dividends later in the game. It's very warm out there, even warmer down there in the turf. So if you're able to establish that run game early, that's going to set up some bigger runs later on in the game. And it's going to limit those big play opportunities for that Rams defense. Like we mentioned, a lot of playmakers on that side of the ball for the Rams, so you don't want to have that ball in the air too much to allow them to make a big play and get this Rams home crowd energized. First and 10 from the 32, minute 20 to go in this first quarter. Ridley under center. He'll give it to Gray again, and Gray fights forward, gets about a yard or two. Cows are coming up along with Terry to make the tackle. Pena in there as well. Anilio Pena, a guy that, Grazing. again, he's a safety, and he, he kind of like sneaks his way in on him as every play, it seems like. Gray a little bit banged up on that last play, limps off under his own power. It should be and Sean Martin, Martin coming in now, the backup running back. He's... A little bit smaller. See him on some kick returns. 5'10", 160 pounder. And more of your third down style of running back. He had eight catches for 80 yards and a touchdown last year, so also a threat out of the backfield. Second down and nine under 30, 30 seconds and go counting as Martin gets the carry and he is stopped. Or maybe a loss or maybe no gain on the play again. It's O'Neill coming up and making that tackle. Also big, Elijah Queen in on that play, nearly pulling his jersey off, getting him down to the ground. Harold O'Neill, the 6'1", 215-pound junior from Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. I believe he's a transfer as well. But certainly comes in and provides some depth at that linebacker position. And Looking at the injuries for the Owls, it looks like Tim O'Shea's day is done on the sidelines. They've taken his helmet, and he has a gigantic ice pack on his left knee. So wish him the best moving forward, but look like his day is done here so far. Third down, 11 when we come back, as that does it for the first quarter of play. This is Shepherd University Rams football here on TV10 and WRNR TV on YouTube. We're back at 60. At Dutch Miller Automotive, we've grown quite a bit over the last 60 years, but our core principles remain the same. We believe in treating our customers and our team members like friends and family, and we see it as our obligation to give back to all the communities we are so fortunate to do business in. In just West Virginia alone, we've grown from one location on the west end of Huntington to 10 rooftops employing more than 500 mountaineers. Check out the inventory from all of our stores at DutchMillerAuto.com. Dutch Miller Automotive Group, West Virginia proud. As a lifelong Jefferson County resident, Paul Espinosa has been a champion for the Eastern Panhandle. Paul is the effective, fiscally conservative voice we need in the West Virginia Senate. He's fought for job creation, student-centered education, the rights of the unborn, protecting our family farms, and was a leader in passing income tax relief for all West Virginians. When residents of the 16th Senatorial District cast their votes for their next senator, the choice is clear. Paul Espinosa for West Virginia State Senate. Paid for by Espinosa for Senate, Mary C. Espinosa Treasurer. We welcome you back here to Shepherdstown. 7 nothing Southern Connecticut State leading with 15 minutes to go as, as the second quarter just started in this first half. Third down and 11 from the 31-yard line for the Owls. 
As early on, Travis, they've tried to get that running game established, but this time Shepard has backed them up to a, obviously a passing situation here. And you see, like we mentioned, they, they've taken a very conservative approach so far today, and when they get behind the chains, that's going to be tough for this Owls offense to overcome because this Rams defense ha, has proven to be stingy so far. Third and 11 from the 31. Ridley in the shotgun looking to throw. Ridley steps up, throws it underneath to Martin. Martin sheds off one tackler, but he's going to be tackled well short of the first down marker. Dante Harrison makes the tackle. A flag is on the field for Southern Connecticut State, potentially, as that flag was out pretty quick. I'll tell you, it didn't, didn't look like the left tackle was holding Cowser on the play. Oh, oh so maybe that's why, because he lined up in the neutral zone, apparently. Well, that is a big penalty because it gives Southern Connecticut State another opportunity here on a third and manageable. Should be about third and six. Ridley with Martin remaining in the back. It's Gray is not checked back in. Souls goes in motion for third down and six from the 36. Ridley takes the snap. Steps up in the pocket, has room to run, throws on the run and incomplete. Wanted Souls, the intended receiver. Looked like believe Derek Adamez in coverage. I believe that was number one, Divine Edwards, sophomore wide receiver out of West Hartford, Connecticut. So it'll be fourth down and six, back deep for Shepard. And there may have been a bit of miscommunication on that play because there was a couple of wide receivers right there in that area. Miles Greer back deep for the Rams. <laughs> and punting for Southern Connecticut State is Piccarelli. It's a high punt. Fair catch singled for by Greer, and Greer makes the fair catch at the 24-yard line. That's where the Rams will take back over. So Shepard's defense gets a big stop there, Travis, because if you go down 14 nothing with a inexperienced offense, even if it being just the first game, I mean, that would really take a lot of confidence out of your Shepard offense early on, I feel like. And that's tough, and putting that much pressure early on, you feel a turnover will probably be the result of them trying to force the issue, trying to get downfield to get back into this game. But, again, we knew that this Rams football team was going to have to rely on their defense early on they were able to rise to the occasion on that last drive, getting their offense the ball back with pretty good field position. Let's see what this Rams offense is able to do on this drive. So they'll move it to the 25 here on first and 10. Morgan looking to throw, looking down the field. Taylor comes back and makes the catch. Taylor is across midfield and out of bounds. Jeremiah Taylor on the back shoulder throw. Hodden in coverage for Southern Connecticut. That was a beautiful route by Jeremiah Taylor. Good job. Just a good back shoulder throw. We know that Houghton is a solid corner, so he's going to be able to play, play it pretty well going deep. But that time, just good communication between the quarterback and the wide receiver, recognizing the coverage. And Morgan able to put the ball on the money and let his athletes make plays for him out there on the edge. I think maybe a little bit of contact from Taylor, but they'll run it with Malachi Brown. He's got a big hole. Malachi Brown across the 30. Brown in a foot race, hurdles a man around the 15-yard line. He's out of bounds. Malachi Brown definitely explosive in the backfield, and that was a big gain on that one for the Rams. Right when they needed something to get going. Uh, two big, now, yeah, two big yeah, plays. Right and in the red zone. And, again, it's not only that you have guys that haven't played a lot, you have a lot of guys that haven't played a lot together. And it's going to take a while to get that, that chemistry and get that feel out there in the game, especially during the first game of the season against a pretty stout defense. Batten and Hill, the receivers up top, as they'll run Brown again. Stutter steps in the hole and then find some room up the middle. A good patient run that time by Brown. That was something with his uh, predecessor, Ronnie Brown, sometimes. Didn't quite have the patience, but he had the speed to sometimes to bounce it outside and make it happen, sometimes much to the chagrin of the coaching staff or the offensive line because sometimes that would result in a holding penalty. But Malachi Brown showing good patience, waiting for those holes to open up in the middle, and that's what you need out of your running back, especially when you have a good zone-blocking offensive line like the Rams have historically had. They'll run Brown again. 
Coming up, making the tackle for Southern Connecticut State is Watson. As well as Magaluzzi on that defensive line. 12.30 to go in the first half. 7 nothing Southern Connecticut State, but the Rams knocking on the door down to the 15-yard line. Third down and three for the Shepherd. Brown in the backfield. Fisher going in motion. They'll play action. Roll out to the left. Looking for the corner of the end zone, and it's caught. Touchdown, Shepard. Jeremiah Taylor hauls it in for the Rams. And with the extra point pending, we could have a tie ball game. Seth Morgan's touchdown pass as a Ram, 7-6. Taylor's first touchdown catch as a member of the Rams, and James Bozik on to attempt the point after. And that's one of the benefits of establishing that run is that it's really going to set up your play-action pass. And that time, Seth Morgan rolling out to his left, had a couple of options on that play, choosing to go deep with that corner out in the back of the end zone, coming up successful for the Rams. Bozik's at extra point is through. It's tied at 7 here with 12-11 to go in the first half. We'll take a 60-second break and be back with more Shepherd football after this. After a car accident, what do you get when you call Mansion Ferretti? You get more experience from a local law firm with over 115 years of combined service. More respect from a team who treats clients like their own family. And more fight because we want you to get every dollar you deserve. Experience, respect, results. If you've been injured, that's what you want in your lawyer. And that's what you'll get when you call us. Car accident? Get more with Mansion Ferretti. 304-264-8505. Hi, Kresha Hornby here. Larry DeMarco, broker of Modern Realty Results, believes he has some of the best real estate agents in the Eastern Panhandle. Agents at Modern Realty Results have years of experience and knowledge of the local real estate market. Agents within the office work as a team to provide quality customer service. We strive to always ensure client satisfaction through handling every transaction with honesty and integrity, all while offering competitive rates. Modern Realty Results is veteran owned and managed. Please call us at 262-4222, modernrealtyresults.com. Looking you back here to Rams Stadium. 7-7 our score, 12-11 to go in this first half of play between Shepard and Southern Connecticut State. It's the season opener for the Rams. Bozick will kick it away. And it will go out of the end zone for a touchback. Shepard takes the ball 75 yards down the field and ties this game up at 7 and sometimes that's all you need to get that first score under your belt to kind of get a little confidence going, get that rhythm going. So the Rams offense putting up their first score, answering the score by the Owls. Our 75-yard touchdown drive capped off by the Jeremiah Taylor 15-yard touchdown. Scoring drive summary is brought to you by Paul Espinoza for State Senate, an effective, fiscally conservative voice for the 16th District. It will be... First and 10 from the 25 for Southern Connecticut State. Ridley with Martin in the back to his right as we see Gray walking around without a helmet on the sideline. Here's a throw complete, juggled by Papalo, and he hauls it in for a first down. You'll see Papalo lined up in a variety of positions so far. Sometimes they have him out wide on well, that last play and this play coming up. They have him lined up in the slot, so the Owls know where their plays are going to come from, and they're doing whatever they can to get their man open. They'll run Martin this time. He finds some room on first and ten, tackled by O'Neal. Along with Pena. Muley, I believe, involved as well, so he'll have to run the sidelines to adjust his shoulder pads. Looks like Forbes will run on for him. As Nathan Muley's a guy that's going to play a lot of different positions on that D line this year. And Jack Baxter has stepped up to kind of fill more of an interior role so they can move Muley around on the D line. It'll be second down and five for the Owls. 11 10 to go in the first half. Ridley trying to set up a screen pass here to the near side. It's complete across midfield and running wild goes. Luke Gadsden, Gadsden in a foot race inside the 10 and finally knocked out of bounds by Dante Harrison at around the three-yard line. Luke Gadsden with a big reception on the catch and run on a perfectly executed screen pass by Southern Connecticut State. 
Sets them up first and goal here at 10.57 to go in the first half. <laughs> and Gadsden tapping his helmet. He needs to come out and grab a breather. You can see he certainly ran out of gas on that play, having to make a couple hard cuts before he was able to get out in the open field. And like you mentioned, good job on that screen. Showed a lot of patience. The quarterback Ridley looking away from the screen initially, looking to Elijah, looking to Elijah Gray, rolling away from the play, then comes back to the smoke screen on the backside. And Gadsden able to make a couple defenders miss and pick up a big chunk of yardage on that play. Gray is back in. They'll hand it to him. Whistle blows, and Pena comes flying through the hole. Gray and him collide, and we have a timeout taken by Southern Connecticut State. Let's take a 30-second break. Our score, Shepard 7, Owls 7, as they are at the three-yard line. First down goal. We're back in 30 with 10.26 to go in this first half. At Dutch Miller Automotive, we've grown quite a bit over the last 60 years but our core principles remain the same. We believe in treating our customers and our team members like friends and family, and we see it as our obligation to give back to all the communities we are so fortunate to do business in. In just West Virginia alone, we've grown from one location on the west end of Huntington to 10 rooftops employing more than 500 mountaineers. Check out the inventory from all of our stores at DutchMillerAuto.com. Dutch Miller Automotive Group, West Virginia proud. I think I might give we welcome you back here to Shepherdstown, tied at seven. First down and goal for Southern Connecticut State at the Shepherd three-yard line with 10.26 to go in this first half. Ridley in the shotgun, Gray back in the backfield to his left. And Ridley takes the snap, looking to throw on first and goal. Throws, slam, uh, touched, no, caught, and then it dropped. Great play by Derek Adama corner on the outside as it looked like that was going to be a touchdown for the Owls, but it was broken up there at the last moment. Thomas doing a good job of not giving up on that play. That's a good play design that time by the Owls, having a route going underneath, opening up a gap towards the back of the end zone. The pass was complete, but Adamas was not having it on his side, able to punch it free before the referees able to raise their hands. Souls and Gats in the wide receivers. Hennessy the tight end here on second down and goal from the three. They'll give it to Gray. Gray rumbles into the line of scrimmage, but he is met by Komayau right at the line of scrimmage. JT Komayau, the sophomore linebacker, again filled in for Dwayne Grant from last year in the regional championship. Devin Lynch is gone, so he'll now start alongside Grantham. Grantham out, though, today, so O'Neill starting and playing well. It's 7 7. will be third and goal, and Gray is coming out again. Yeah, I was trying to go use similar play to what they scored that first touchdown with, running Gray off that left tackle side, but the Rams defense able to rise to the challenge and turn him away, and Gray once again comes over to the sidelines in pain. Loss of one on that previous play. Ridley rolling out to the right, looking to throw. Avoids the sack, throws to the end zone, incomplete. Wanted either Papalo or the diving receiver in the back of the end zone, Tariq Hetmer. But it falls incomplete. It will be fourth and goal from the four as it was a loss of one on the gray run. And Southern Connecticut State's going to go for it. Worst case scenario, Shepard would have to go 96 yards. If you don't get this touchdown here, 9.34 to go. But I don't know. Would you kick the field goal or would you go for it here, Travis? Uh, it's early in the game. Hey, that's why uh, they get paid the big bucks, but I will take the points. I will Sean take the points. Martin, the running back. Ridley in the gun. Ridley looking to throw. Steps up. And he is dropped back at the five-yard line. Looked like Jack Baxter and Bednarski in on that sack. And Shepard gets. Yeah, I would have took the field goal. You're on the road, first game of the year. You're playing a team that's ranked. <laughs> yes. So you get a little bit of momentum, come away with something. But now, all of a sudden, now you have the home fans. Now they're into it. The defense is fired up with a big goal line stand. And you're giving the ball back to that Rams offense that really seemed to get things rolling on that last one. So take the points. They've been having a conservative approach so far today. So surprised that they decided to gamble on that, especially with your running back injured on the sidelines. Maybe if Gray's out there, maybe you, maybe it's a different thought process. But with him out, I, I don't think that you can do that. First down and 10 from the 5 for Shepard as the Rams now backed up. We'll see how they can execute. Having to go 95 yards to put it into the end zone. Fisher 
is lined up. That's du- or, I'm sorry, that's Brian Jester lined it up to the right, but a false start on Shepard will move it back. So well, that hurts. A little bit. It's only two and a half yards. <laughs> yeah. It just feels like it yeah. when you're only at the yeah. five-yard line. Now you're at the two-yard line. First down and ten. They'll run it with Brown. Brown oh, good just defense. gets out of the end zone to avoid a safety. Flying through that hole. I believe that was DeGello again. He's been all over the place. DeGello doing a good job. The 6'2", 230-pound junior. It'll be second down and 12 for Shepard. And he's a player that can get in the backfield and sorry, wreak havoc. And 14. Hit 12 and a half tackles for loss last year. Four of those sacks. Also had two interceptions and two pass breakups. Five quarterback hurries. So he's a player that is familiar making plays in an opponent's backfield. Second and 14 from the one. Morgan forced the throw. He looks deep. Far sideline for Taylor. It's broken up and incomplete. Knocked away on the play. By Jean, G- Jean Desir. Desir. Only a 5'7 corner. Yeah, he but he's able to he recover was, with the speed uh, to knock it away. There you go. Almost had a shot to pick that one off. So if he's 5'7, 170 pounds, you know he can burn. <laughs> you know, they're not going to put him out there for his physicality. You know he can fly, and that time did a good job of making a play in the football and almost coming up with a big interception. He's so. given up a, like, a lot of size. Going up against Taylor, 6-2. Hill, the receiver to the near side. Taylor, the receiver to the far. Brown in the backfield here on first and 14. Brown trying to just find a way out of that end zone to avoid a safety, and he does get it out to about the two-yard line. And Shepard will be forced to punt. Coming up and making the tackle was Watson for Southern Connecticut State. So I guess the good thing about going for it is Shepard didn't do anything with that possession. You can get really good field position and try to get back in. you got a nip and tuck game. Sometimes that's the approach that you have to take is we're going to play field position. And, again, they, they're showing that they have confidence in their defense. So far it's been a pretty even matchup between these two teams with about eight minutes to go in this second quarter. I'm like, And you have a dangerous punt returner. So, again, they, they, they're playing to their strengths. Papalo will field it around the 40. Good punt from Barrick as Pablo does make the field and he'll run to this near side, gets it across the 30 and finally knocked out of bounds by number 99 Richie Aguilar or Josh Hayward, I think that might have been Hayward 5'7 fullback, 225 pounder, but it could also be Aguilar, not certain there but one of them made that tackle number 99 there on the play Like we mentioned, Papalo can do it in a different, a variety of ways, catching passes. He sets them up here at the 27-yard line, first down and 10, 7.51 to go in this second quarter, Ridley under center. Ridley will hand it off to Martin. Martin has a big hole, gashing the Rams' defense down to about the 17-yard line. Our second quarter presented to you on TV10 by Smallwood and Small Insurance and Martinsburg, your total insurance solution at 121 Administrative Drive. Call 304-263-3361. As well as Hagerstown Ford, revolutionizing the car buying experience. Go to HagerstownFord.com. I saw uh, Tyson Bajan picking up a new ride from Hagerstown, new Ford F-150. So, shout out to... Hagerstown Ford from that. Second down and one. Here's Martin on the carry. Martin has the first down and more down to about the 11-yard line before he's tackled by Anilio Pena. Now you're starting to see a little bit more room in the running game for that Owls offense. Like we mentioned early on, you're able to bang them early with Elijah Gray, the 5'8", 215-pound running back. Now things have seemed to have loosened up a little bit, and Martin's having some success. He's more the change of pace back, third down back, but now he's going to have to take on a larger role with Elijah Gray on the sideline with a big ice pack on one of his knees. So some big injuries early on for this Owls offense, but they certainly seem to be able to maintain. Pena was tapping the helmet, so he checks out. First down and 10 from the 11. Ridley takes the snap. They'll go Martin. No, they'll fake it. Throw end zone just short of the end zone. Tackled at the one by Papalo. 
Good ball. Take that time by Ridley faking that zone read. The defense bites on it. He's able to pull it. He almost had to fight with the running back to get the ball back in time. And he fooled me. Yeah, and Papalo able to do a good job of just sneaking in right behind the linebackers and really able to throw a precision pass to put them on the doorstep of the goal line. It's almost like the Titans play in the Super Bowl. Titans just one yard <laughs> short. Not as dramatic situation. Yeah. <laughs> almost the same. 5.55 <laughs> to go in this first half. I formation. Ridley gives to Martin. Martin running in, and he is into the end zone. Touchdown, Southern Connecticut State. Oh, give some credit to the left guard on that play. Big Dan Schwartz helped him get across that goal line. The Rams defense able to stack him up. But the running back, Sean Martin, able to run right behind Dan Schwartz. I think he, he should get a little... Get, get a piece of that touchdown. An assist. It's, yeah, he should get an assist for that one. He did a good job of pushing his running back. you got to push the pile sometimes as an offensive lineman. 13-7, Southern Connecticut State grabs the lead here with 5.42 to go in this first half. The extra point is up, and it is good. 14-7, Owls on top. We're back in 60 seconds. This is Shepherd University Rams football on TV 10 and WRNR TV on YouTube. Where does flavor come from? Well, um, when people love food, they cook it on a Traeger grill. Meat, corn, even pie. <laughs> and then the Traeger does the rest, which brings everyone to celebrate this beautiful thing that they've created. Because when you share delicious food with your friends, that's the flavor of life. Shop now and save at Orsini's today. The Palace Lounge in Martinsburg is the place to be. Join us every night to relax and enjoy football or basketball games featuring either the Martinsburg Bulldogs, Shepherd University Rams, or West Virginia Mountaineers. We will have steak night every Wednesday, trip nights every Thursday, and now taco and margarita nights every Tuesday. You can find us on Facebook or call 304-267-7520. The Palace Lounge is located at 1350 Edwin Miller Boulevard in Martinsburg. Back here to Ram Stadium as Southern Connecticut State gets into the end zone on the Sean Martin touchdown run. It was set up after Southern Connecticut State was stopped in the or at the goal line by the Rams. Then Shepard goes three and out, taking over on their own four yard line. A punt returned by Papalo set him up at the 27, and they take it in 27 yards. Uh, on the drive and, and with the Martin touchdown run of about two yards. Gives Southern Connecticut State a 14-7 to lead. Barry Hill will field it from his own goal line for the Rams on the kickoff, and Hill gets out to about the 22 as he fought forward on that one. But our scoring drive summary is brought to you by Paul Espinoza for State Senate, an effective, fiscally conservative voice for the 16th District. As it is 14-7, Southern Connecticut State with 5.35 to go in this first half, Travis. And this is another big drive for Shepard. How they respond, they responded from 7 nothing earlier. Can they respond again here? So that last drive backed up against their own goal line, and that's going to make you play a little bit more tight, a little bit more conservative. But now they have better field position and see if they can continue that momentum that they were able to establish when they got that first score of the game. First and 10 from the 22. They'll run Malachi Brown off the left side. Brown doesn't find much room, maybe getting back to the line of scrimmage. We talked about him before. That time the quarterback, like John John Desir, able to come up and stick his face in there. You don't expect that from a corner that's only 5'7", 175, 170 pounds, able to come up and make a play in the running game at the line of scrimmage. But looked like there was going to be a lot of room over there. The Rams running behind that tight bunch formation. Malachi Brown, but the defense able to string it out, and the corner able to come up and make a big play for the Owls' defense. Looks like a loss of one on the play. It will be second and 11 for the Rams. Morgan throws underneath, complete to Barry Hill. Hill makes a man miss. Hill trying to get to the outside, and Hawden coming up and making the tackle loses his helmet on the play. Hill doing a lot of running side to side. Got to get north and south. And, and You're pressing. You want to make a big play. You want to get back into this game, but you're not going to be able to get it back all in one chunk. Take what the defense gives you, and when you have a chance to get north and south, please do so. <laughs> so Ethan Williams will run on. 
As Hill checks out on a third down, one of those newcomers as well. Williams, a transfer from Boston College and UConn. Third down and seven from the 25-yard line. 4.29 to go in this first half. 14-7, Southern Connecticut State. Morgan looking deep down the sideline for Jeremiah Taylor. He hauls it in into Southern Connecticut State territory. Goes Taylor on reception in coverage for Southern Connecticut State was Nico, I'm sorry, was DeJon Banks. First down and 10, Shepard. At that time, nothing fancy. Was Jackson just able to turn on the Jets and get past it? Jeremiah Taylor continuing to be the big target for Seth Morgan early on in this ball game. First and 10 from the 48. They'll run Malachi Brown. Brown trying to get to the outside. And Brown Good eventually cuts it up and finds positive yardage. But Southern Connecticut State on the pursuit there. Hassan Dominic was as hawking well as in the whole way. Magazzoli from the defensive line was doing a good job as well. As that will make it first down, or second down and nine, excuse me, just after a one-yard game. That was just disciplined run pursuit that time by Hassan Dominic. He knew what was coming, didn't overrun the play, just good technique, stayed in a good athletic stance and was able to make the tackle out there on the edge. These are good, experienced linebackers for the Owls, and they've done their job for the most part here today. Here's another run. Looks like Barnett on the carry, I believe. No, Nazir Russell getting his first carry of the season. Number seven. He was able to get some action last year in a loaded backfield for the Rams. Had nine carries for 91 yards and two touchdowns last year. So one of the few returners at the skill position for that Rams offense. He's the leading rusher from last season that returns. (laughs) Third down and three. I like that. You're a glass half full kind of guy. Morgan looking deep down the field and incomplete. Rams won a penalty intended for Jeremiah Taylor. No call on the play on a third and three. We'll see if they go for it here. Houghton, good defense, but lucky that he didn't get pass interference on that play because a lot of times when the defender initiates contact, and the big thing, he doesn't get his head around to locate the football. That usually warrants a flag, but that time the referee's letting him play, and sometimes we'll see that with these officials early on. They're going to let him play football and have some physical play that time, but Still kind of a surprise that they didn't get the penalty on that play. Well, Travis, this is another situation. Fourth and three from the 41. Shepard would have gone for this. Oh, absolutely. Not this year. So a lot of differences with the new system offensively. Barrick punts it high, and it will bounce into the end zone for a touchback. So it didn't really work out punting as you only get a net of 21 yards. So, I mean, it's, it's just going to be a different style of football for especially the Rams early. this year. Yeah, especially early on until this team gets some type of familiarity and some type of confidence and chemistry going. So early on, you're going to have to play a conservative style of football, rely on your defense to give you good field position, and you don't want to make unforced errors. And like you mentioned, last year you had such a high-octane offense, you know you could go out there and maybe turn the ball over or maybe go for it on a fourth down when most teams normally wouldn't because you knew you had enough firepower to make it up later on in the game. Right now, that is yet to be seen with this Rams offense, but they have certainly shown flashes here early on, especially with Taylor out wide, just showing some deep speed and giving that Owls defense some trouble early on. It's pretty hard to replace the best quarterback in the history of (laughs) Division II college football. As big carry here from Martin, doesn't find much room. But can Shepard get to that point? We'll just have to wait and see throughout the year. I mean, they're not going to, obviously, nobody expects Seth Morgan to come in and beat Tyson Bajan, but can he be close to it or, or really good? And I think there's still a possibility of that, even though it's been kind of a tough first half for the Rams offensively. Two minutes to go in the first half, 14-7, Southern Connecticut State has the football here on a second down and 11 from their own 19. Ridley. Stands in the pocket under some pressure, sheds off a sack, running away again, and finally brought down in the backfield for the Rams coming off the edge. I think that was Cole Scott. Cole Scott able to play in. Ridley, a big physical quarterback, able to shake off the first couple would-be tacklers, but 
Cole Scott was able to wrangle him down. He's and, done that a lot. Yeah. He's made it tough for them to bring him down in that backfield, and, and usually his ability to extend those plays has resulted in some big plays for the Owls, but not that time. It's Cole Scott coming up to make that tackle, and it will be a third and, a lo- third and 17, excuse me. Really looking to throw. Has time, throws it underneath, complete to Martin. Martin gets away from Scott. Brought down by Harrison, as well as Pena on the play. It'll be fourth down. Not able to make the fourth down, but what you do is give your punt team a little bit more room where the, where the punter's not going to be backed up to the back of the end zone. And, again, no reason to force it. You have the lead. You've been having success. You don't want to throw a play up and allow this Rams defense to make a play and get this home crowd involved. So Shepard takes a timeout with 56 seconds to go. We'll take it. And we'll keep it here. Don't want to miss this punt return here. Fourth down, just under a minute. They're going to move the clock to 59 seconds here, Travis. So you should get pretty good field position and, and potentially an opportunity to get it in James Bozick range. Uh, we see he has a pretty big leg. You know, He was the kickoff guy last year, so they were already knowing about his power. Maybe his accuracy has gotten a little bit better this year as he's won the kicking job. Yeah, we were able to see the blue and gold scrimmage earlier this summer, and He certainly had no problems, has a big leg, able to knock that through. you got 59 seconds, a timeout left. You're going to get the ball back with pretty good field position. So, again, a a, a lot of different tests here early on for this Rams offense, and let's see if they're able to come away with some success. Fourth and six from the 24 for Southern Connecticut State, who will kick it away to Greer. Greer comes up, fields it about the 37-yard line. Greer. Big hole, and he is still on his feet into Southern Connecticut State territory. James Griffiths coming up on the tackle. That was a touchdown-saving tackle. He almost knocked it free. Good run that time, I agree. You get good field position, a little bit of juice, and that's something that you need out of your special teams play. I think that's going to be something that the Rams are going to have to rely more on this year is getting big plays out of those special teams units because you realize that the offense isn't going to be able to put up 40 points that the way that they did last year, so you're going to need to be able to get more points from a variety of areas and one better play, uh, no better place to do it than with your special teams. So first and 10 from the 37, Morgan looking to throw. Seth has time. Morgan with all day to throw. Looks and fires completed. Oh, my good. a big shot. That's ineligible man downfield. Goodness gracious. For Barry Hill. <laughs> Incomplete on the play. Who made that hit? There was. Is that Hodden? Whoever it is, that's our collision of the game right there. Travis. <laughs> we'll give we'll give it to Hodden. He seems to be the most fired up about it. So typically, that's the guy, right? But that's got to be an eligible man downfield. That James, hurts your James, good return. Yeah, James Bell was about 10 yards down the field when the ball came out. Yeah. You might guess that that was potentially an RPO situation where the line doesn't know if it's going to be a runner or a pass. Well, the rest of the guys stayed the on the line quickly. of scrimmage. Well, then I don't know. Yeah. And Bell is like, that's never a good situation when you're offensive lineman, when you're like way downfield, like all by yourself. You know something is going horribly wrong. It happens sometimes. Yes, it does. As there is the ineligible man downfield. So that makes it a little bit tougher on Shepard to get into field goal range. They're now on the 42-yard line, first down and 15. Morgan under pressure. He spins out a sack. Morgan is now brought down. DeGello stuck with it and makes the sack. And DeGello had a good game last year versus Shepard. Had eight tackles for those solo. We, we mentioned that 3-4 defense. You could tell that this Owls defense prides themselves on linebacker play. They don't really put in a nickel package. They just bump out that outside linebacker. So they're going to stay in their base look, and they're going to bring heat. And they do it in a variety of ways. They do it versus the run, versus the pass, and they have a relentless pass rush with DeGello coming in off the edge. Timeout taken. Here by Shepard, 31 and a half seconds to go. You're still backed up. It's only second down, so I guess that's the positive here on second down and 25 with 31 and a half seconds in this first half here, Travis. I mean, even if you don't get a first down, if you can get 10, 15 yards or so and and make it 
potentially closer for a field goal. You could potentially run Bozick out there for a last-second kick. That right now, and not even thinking about putting on points on the bar, you want to get something positive going. Because yeah. right now it's been kind of sporadic. Like you've been relying on big plays. It hasn't been sustained drives so far. So it's just if you can get something positive going where you can just move the chains going into halftime, I imagine the Rams coaching staff will have to be happy with that as this young group begins to come together. Southern Connecticut State does get the ball to start the second half. So, And they've done a good job of killing clock. Killing okay. clock. Yeah, they've been chewing up clock pretty good today. So now it's actually going to be second and 20 from the 47. For Shepard with 31 and a half seconds to go in the first half. Morgan looking to throw. Seth Moore delivers it underneath, complete to Malachi Brown. Brown gets it across the 35, still on his feet. Down inside the 30 to about the 29-yard line. 18 <laughs> seconds, rolling clock. Shepard's got to spike it or burn a timeout, their final one, but they're going to keep that final timeout with 11.8 seconds. I'm oh, sorry, they're, they're out of timeouts. So. so good awareness that time by Morgan, getting up quickly to the line, the offense getting set, recognizing the situation, and that's certainly a positive that you got to take. You, you have this unit, a lot of new faces out there, but they still had the wherewithal late in the second half to get up, get set to their quarterback and go ahead and clock, and you don't want to get an unnecessary penalty and a, and a time runoff to end the half. Southern Connecticut has two timeouts left. Shepard is out of timeouts after the spike. 11.8 seconds, 14-7. Fouls, you can probably take one shot at the end zone and then maybe run that field goal unit out. Has certainly be a shot to the sideline. Morgan pumps once, looking deep toward the end zone for Barry Hill. It's incomplete. Looked like he had a couple options with Jackson going over the middle and Hill going to that outside, but it was going to have to be a precision throw to either one, and that time just a little bit too far for Hill to bring in. Field goal unit will run on for Shepard with 5.8 seconds. Tight defense that time by the Al secondary. The Rams attacking them with a post-wheel action with Hill and Jackson. Al's able to stay right in the hip pocket of the wide receivers and make the quarterback make that big throw. Apparently it was a turnover on downs. I thought Shepard still had another down. So, they had that penalty, but turnover on downs ends the offensive series there for the Rams. And Southern Connecticut State will just take a knee. So, clock expires here in this first half. And... 14-7 14-7 our score. Owls on top. And we will now send it down to Dylan Bishop whenever he has Coach McCook for our halftime interview here with head coach Ernie McCook. And this looks like Dylan is trying to get him here, and he will. So we'll send it to Dylan. Dylan, go ahead and take it away. All right, Coach McCook here at halftime, down seven points, seven points on the board. What do you think your team needs to do in the second half to take control of this one? Well, we've got to come out and get a stop in the second half coming out of the locker room, and then we've got to put a drive together and get in sync on offense. We've got to keep our defense off the field, and we've got to execute. What's the main positives you want to build on in the second half? Uh, you know what? Handling adversity. Our guys are, are competing. They're doing the best they can. I, I feel very good about it, so we're just going to keep rolling, and you know, I feel good about our football team. And, you know, we got a whole second half to play. All right, Coach, thank you very much. Yep. Back to you guys. Thank you, Dylan Shepard. Ranked in the preseason around 13th in the country. We will take a two-minute break, but currently trailing 14-7 to Southern Connecticut State. On the other side of this break, we'll have the halftime show. This is Shepard Rams football on TV10 and WRNR TV on YouTube. Ollie's VIP Northside is the best spot to catch all your favorite teams. Join us Monday for Dollar Wings and Monday Night Football. Thursdays on the patio for the Cornhole Tourney. Friday Night Lights with Happy Hour Specials or Saturdays during or after the college games for Steak Night. Get a ribeye or New York Steak for just $26.95. Ollie's has great food and drink menus too along with 17 TVs to watch any game of your choice from anywhere at the bar or their outdoor patio and fire pit. So stop by and see for yourself today at 36 Veronica Drive in Martinsburg. That's Ollie's VIP Northside. We'll see you for the game. We are the Skinner Brothers. Most folks only need a lawyer once or twice in their lives. And when they're injured or in an accident, most people don't know what to do. We get it. It can be overwhelming. Nobody likes to be told, you need a lawyer. But that's why we're here. We want to get you back to your normal life and help you recover. So if you or a loved one has been in an accident, 
give us a call. Let us figure out how we can get you compensation. Reach us at SkinnerWins.com or Google Skinner Lawyers. We'll treat you like family. Mayhem is everywhere. I'm in new bangs, and you can't stop staring at me. That's it. Just tilt the rearview mirror over here. And while you're checking me out more times than a library book, your car is wandering into that lane over there. More bangs? <laughs> Neat. And if you've got cut rate insurance, you could be paying for this yourself. So get Allstate. Call Martinsburg Allstate agent Gary Kelly today at 304-263-4596. We're at the half. Time for a scoring recap, stats and analysis, scores from around the PSAC and Super Region 1, the Division 1 Top 25, and the latest on the West Virginia University Mountaineers and Marshall University Thundering Herd. Let's get it started as we go back to the field and rejoin our TV10 broadcast team. Welcome you back here to Ram Stadium. For the halftime show, brought to you by the Mansion Freddie Law Firm in Martinsburg, where it's about seeking justice for you. Go to wvjusticelawyers.com. Nick Verzalini, Travis Smith here on the halftime show. Spencer Dupuis, our on-site producer. Back in the studio is Kyle McLaughlin. Down on the sidelines, Dylan Bishop and our cameramen tonight, or this afternoon, Matt Miller and Daryl Miller. Shout out to them. And Travis, uh, what was your takeaways from that first half? Well, you can certainly see that the Rams are having some trouble finding some footing with this new group, like we mentioned. Not only do they have to replace a lot of firepower from last year, but they're having to replace it with guys that haven't played together before. So that's really going to make that learning curve that much steeper when they're coming in. Not only are they new to the program, they're new with playing with each other. And you see that chemistry isn't quite there yet, but that's to be expected here early on in the game. And again, early on in the game, you had some penalties that kind of derailed some of those drives early on for the Rams. But hats off to this Owls team. Like you mentioned, they're coming off of a season last year. If you look at the overall record, nothing that's going to going to wow you. They went 3-8 and eight overall, but if you look a little bit closer, they did win three of their last five games. So it's a program where they have some confidence going and feel like they're trending in the right direction. And they were able to get that done here early on. Quarterback Keith Ridley, like we mentioned, the grad student coming in from Bryant University has been the steady hand on the wheel so far. Early on, Elijah Gray was able to be the pace setter, the big running back. But even as he went down, Sean Martin was able to come in. But I think the biggest story so far is that Al's defense, that linebacking core, veteran linebacking core, has really set the tone and has created a lot of problems for that Rams offense. Looking over at the Rams defense, Coach McCook touched on us some. They're playing great football, but right now they're playing too much football. You've got to get those guys off the field. It is still a very warm, it's, it's, it's pretty much a summer day down there on the field, and it's going to be even warmer down there in the turf, so you don't want those guys going down there against a hard, charging running game because it's going to start to wear them out as the game goes on because, like we mentioned, the Rams undersized up front. Small defensive linemen, smaller linebackers, more built towards speed, so it's going to be tough for them to keep on trying to withstand that type of running game and the owls are just have a good game plan coming in they're going to manage the game they're not going to risk the ball too much and allow some big plays to let Shepard get back into it so right now the rams they're going to have to make some plays they're going to have to create the opportunities because the owls are content with the way the game's going right now they're chewing up a lot of clock and putting that much more pressure on the offense because they're having to stand on the sidelines for an extended period of time and then come out on the field and trying to manufacture some chemistry and so far the owls defense has not allowed that to happen other than that one drive gray and martin with the two touchdown runs for southern connecticut state and then it was seth morgan connecting with jeremiah taylor for a touchdown earlier in the game our first half stats brought to you by the larry demarco and modern Realty. brought to you by larry demarco and modern Realty results if you're looking for a home in the tri-state they have you covered shepherd trails here at the half 14 to 7 Travis, uh, what do you think Shepard could do a little bit better in the second half to try to get a win? And then for Southern Connecticut State, anything that you think they need to change or do you feel like they kind of have pretty much executed perfectly for their game plan and what they're trying to do here today? All right. Well, looking over at the Shepard side, uh, side of the ball and the offensive side of the ball in particular, some more short routes. 
Get some easy throws, some easy catches for your wide receivers and your quarterback to get on the same page and get a rhythm going. A lot of those plays have been vertical and tacking downfield, and they've had some success. But when you have those deep routes going, what you need is a lot of extra time for that quarterback in the pocket. And the Owls defense recognizes that. That's why they've been sending a variety of blitzes. When you have that 3-4 defense, it just lends itself to a variety of exotic blitzes. And the Shepard Rams offensive line so far has had some issues picking up those linebackers screaming in from the second level. So I think you're going to help yourself by shortening up that passing game, some quick hitches over the middle, just to try to get the offense into a rhythm. And you go to that on first down. So right now the running game has had some spots where they're able to get it done, but what they're running into is when they're running on first down, the Owls defense is sitting there waiting for them. So if you're able to use a short passing game to kind of supplement that running game early on in the drive, I think that's going to help things out. I think the Rams defense is doing well. They just need some help with the Rams offense to keep them off the field. You don't want to wear that defense out early on. For the Owls, I just think you rinse and repeat. They did an excellent job in that first half. Ball control offense. They're not risking turnovers. They're managing the game. They're chewing up clock. And the defense has just been flying around making plays. And again, that linebacking core is the strength of that defense. Seems to be the strength of the team. And they've relied on it and been successful here early on. So I don't think you have to change too much on the second half. If anything, maybe push those safeties back where they're helping out a little bit more over the top. So it's going to put a little bit more emphasis on those linebackers to maintain that uh, run stopping in the box. But the, if you get those safeties out over the top, that's going to take away some of those deep passes over the top where the Rams offense, that has been a bright spot for them so far as Taylor's been streaking down the sidelines, almost just been unstoppable so far. So if, that's, if those safeties are able to help out over the top, I think that might be able to slow that down. But certainly shaping up to be a very interesting second half because both teams got a lot to prove here to, down the stretch. Definitely is the case. We will take our two-minute break here on the halftime show. On the other side of that break, we'll send it to Kyle McLaughlin in the studio. He'll have a halftime scoreboard update for you. And then on the other side of that break, or before the start of the second half, we'll have an interview. Dylan Bishop will be joined with Shepard Rams quarterback, or former Shepard Rams quarterback, Tyson Bajant, current Chicago Bears member. Talk to Tyson about his journey so far in the NFL and, and what he's probably liked about being back here at Shepard uh, for week one of the Shepard Rams football season. This is Shepard Rams football on TV 10 and WRNR TV on YouTube. We're back in two minutes. At Dutch Miller Automotive, we've grown quite a bit over the last 60 years, but our core principles remain the same. We believe in treating our customers and our team members like friends and family, and we see it as our obligation to give back to all the communities we are so fortunate to do business in. In just West Virginia alone, we've grown from one location on the west end of Huntington to 10 rooftops employing more than 500 mountaineers. Check out the inventory from all of our stores at DutchMillerAuto.com. Dutch Miller Automotive Group, West Virginia proud. The Honda HRV, CRV, Pilot, Passport, and Ridgeline. They all have one thing in common. They never back off from a challenge. Available with all-wheel drive, the Honda SUV lineup has the performance you can count on and the capability to amaze. It's no wonder Kelly Blue Book's KBB.com named Honda the 2022 best value brand. CMA's Honda of Winchester, 3985 Valley Pike. CMA, moving lives forward. Based on 2022 brand image awards from Kelly Blue Book, visit KBB.com for more information. After a car accident, what do you get when you call Mansion Ferretti? You get more experience from a local law firm with over 115 years of combined service. More respect from a team who treats clients like their own family. And more fight because we want you to get every dollar you deserve. Experience, respect, results. If you've been injured, that's what you want in your lawyer. And that's what you'll get when you call us. Car accident? Get more with Mansion Ferretti. 304-264-8505. Really? Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna call my parents. Dad, come over. The first gets done. The Traeger Connect experience. Everything you need for epic flavor. And then some. Shop now and save at Orsini's today. Welcome into the Halftime Extra Point Scoreboard Show here on TV10 and WRNR TV on YouTube. I'm Colin McLaughlin. Is at the half. The Shepherd Rams currently down 14-7 to against Southern Connecticut State. Let's now get some scores from around the PSAC as 
pop up there for you on TV10. Right now, some final scores already from Thursday. Clarion defeated Lincoln 30-20. to Bloomsburg lost to Fairmont State 34-30. Charleston beat Gannon 22-13. to IUP beat Ashland 24-17. Millersville defeated St. Anselm 33-7. Wheeling University knocked off Seton Hill 35-24. East Strasburg with the dominating performance over Pace, 62-9 was the final in that one. And Ferris State defeated Mercyhurst, 54-12. Now let's take a look at some current games going on between some PSAC schools. As at the half, it is Shippensburg against number 24 in the country, Newberry. Those teams tied up at 7 at the half. Also a tie game. At the half, excuse me, actually, Assumption right beforehand, so got to change that. Did not see it, looks like, in the final seconds of the half. Scored a touchdown, so number 23, Assumption, now leads Cutstown 21-14. to 35 nothing now is your score between Duquesne and Edinburgh. And then in the first quarter, as we quickly flip over here to the 1 o'clock kickoff times, it is Lockhaven up 14-0 over Post. Still no score yet announced between Westchester and Bentley. And then at 6 o'clock, it will be Slippery Rock taking on Wayne State. Those are your scores from around the Pennsylvania State Athletic Conference. As again, at the half, it is SCSU 14, Shepard 7. We'll take another two-minute break and then send it back to the guys at Ram Stadium so that you can hear from Dylan Bishop along with current Chicago Bear quarterback and former Shepherd Ram and Martinsburg Bulldog Tyson Bajant. You're tuned in to Shepherd University Ram Football on TV10 and WRNR TV on YouTube. Ollie's VIP Northside is the best spot to catch all your favorite teams. Join us Monday for Dollar Wings and Monday Night Football. Thursdays on the patio for the Cornhole Tourney. Friday Night Lights with Happy Hour Specials or Saturdays during or after the college games for Steak Night. Get a ribeye or New York Steak for just $26.95. Ollie's has great food and drink menus too along with 17 TVs to watch any game of your choice from anywhere at the bar or their outdoor patio and fire pit. So stop by and see for yourself today at 36 Veronica Drive in Martinsburg. That's Ollie's VIP Northside. We'll see you for the game. W. Harley Miller Systems understands the need and desire for reliable and affordable smart home solutions. Secure your home with a security system and keep a close eye on your family. Automate your home with a Control 4 system and have smart technology work as one. Set daily schedules to control your thermostats. Push a button and set the mood for dinner by dimming lights and playing music, or just sit back and enjoy a movie in your own home theater. Put decades of experience to work for you. Visit us at whmsystems.com or call 304-350-1931. With four new car dealerships and four used car dealerships in three states, Parsons is the largest used car and fastest growing new car dealer in the tri-state area. Take Parsons Ford with huge savings on hundreds of new Fords, financing from 0%, Parsons' goal of financing for all, and Parsons' famous above-market trade-in allowances that help make Parsons number one for used cars, too. See why so many won't buy anywhere but Parsons Ford in Martinsburg. We became number one by making you number one first. Parsons. As a lifelong Jefferson County resident, Paul Espinosa has been a champion for the Eastern Panhandle. Paul is the effective, fiscally conservative voice we need in the West Virginia Senate. He's fought for job creation, student-centered education, the rights of the unborn, protecting our family farms, and was a leader in passing income tax relief for all West Virginians. When residents of the 16th Senatorial District cast their votes for their next senator, the choice is clear. Paul Espinosa for West Virginia State Senate. Paid for by Espinosa for Senate, Mary C. Espinosa Treasurer. Welcome you back here to Ram Stadium. About four minutes or so until the start of the second half. Momentarily, we'll be joined by Dylan and Tyson Bajant. But uh, we got some first-half stats for you now. So far, Shepard trailing Southern Connecticut State 14-7 to here at the half. Malachi Brown, the leading rusher for the Rams, 10 carries, 51 yards. Lawn of 26 on the day. Seth Morgan, 10 of 16. 121 yards and a touchdown. Jeremiah Taylor's been the big weapon offensively. Six catches, 95 yards and a score. Malachi Brown, two catches for 18 yards. Cordell Batten, one catch for five yards. And Barry Hill, one catch for three yards. 
Defensively, Koma Yao has led the way with three and a half total tackles, along with Jack Baxter. And then on the Southern Connecticut State side of things, Martin, six carries for 22 yards and a score. Ridley, four carries for for 17 yards. Elijah Gray, 10 carries, 16 yards. It's not like they're you know controlling the game and running all over the Rams, but they're just keeping with it, Travis, which is a big storyline as you look at it. 22 because carries it, for 57 yards is it blowing you away, but it's consistent. It, it keeps your offense on schedule is what it does, where you're not having to try to make big plays from behind the chains. And then in the receiving game, Tylon Papalo, three catches for 35 yards. He's the leader. Gadsden had that big 56-yard screen play. Sean Martin, one catch for 12 yards. And Ryan Souls, a catch for eight yards. Our scoring drives, Elijah Gray capped off a drive, 13 plays, 60 yards. With the one-yard touchdown run, the Rams would come back in the second quarter with a five-play, 75-yard drive in two minutes and 20 seconds, capped off by the 14-yard touchdown pass from Seth Morgan to Jeremiah Taylor. And Sean Martin would score from one yard out on a four-play, 27-yard drive, taking 209 off the clock, 542 to go in the second quarter. And our score, 14-7 here at the half, Travis. And something that stood out to me was the lack of third-down conversions from both of these teams in that first half. You look at over for Southern Connecticut first, one for six on third down conversions. And conversely with the Rams offense, two for seven on third down conversions. So you can look at it as the offense has been struggling. But honestly, if you look at it, the defenses have just been that good. And early on in the season, sometimes the the defense is a little bit more ahead of the curve as the offense because it takes a little bit more timing and chemistry to get things to click properly on on the offensive side of the ball as we're on defense, you're just flying to the party and putting a hat on somebody. And that's what these defenses have been excelling at so far today. We mentioned that stout linebacking core for the Owls defense. And also, again, the Rams defense able to go out there and make some big plays as well. So right now, the defenses have the early edge, but the Owls have been able to make just enough plays to give them the lead going here into the second half. And Elijah Gray has his helmet on, so at least maybe trying to come back into the ball game for Southern Connecticut State. Still favoring that left knee. Has a sleeve on. Had an ice pack on it to go into halftime. And the Owls are certainly going to need him, especially with Tim O'Shea going down early for that Owls offense. A big part, more of an H-back, the way they use him to move him around. Yeah, and they're stretching out Gray right now here on this near sideline as we await Tyson Bajan to join Dylan Bishop here before the start of the second half. But... <coughs> Shepard uh, trailing 14-7 to here at the half, and Southern Connecticut State will get the ball to start the second half. So this is a big first drive. Obviously, if you go down 21-7, uh, that could be, you know, obviously pretty costly early in the game, especially if it's a long drive from Southern Connecticut State. But the Rams have had their moments where the defense has looked how we expect them to look, and we kind of expect the defense to have to carry this team early in the year, and if they're going to do that, this would be a good way to set the tone not only for – the second half, but for the rest of the season on Shepard defense is going to be the strength of this football team. And with it being a nip and tuck game here so far, I think the biggest thing for both ball clubs going into the second half is that you don't want to be that first team to turn the ball over because that could be just the spark that's going to ignite the fire. So you want to avoid that as much as you want to have success on the opening drive for the Owls. Again, you want to stay in your lane. Don't force it. You've been ball control, game management style of of, of attack on the offensive side of the ball, stick with it. You have no reason to abandon it. The Shepherd Rams offense hasn't shown that they can put up points in bunches so far, so there's no reason for you to change up your game plan. Just avoid making that big mistake that's going to allow the Rams to get back into it. And for the Rams, again, you know you're struggling a little bit on offense, but don't force it. You're only one score out of this game. Stick with what you've been doing. Malachi Brown has shown some flashes in the passing game. Uh, Taylor. And Hill has shown that they can make some plays out wide. I just think Shepard needs to attack a little bit more over the middle because the, uh, the, the Owls defense sending those inside linebackers so much, there is a big gap in between the hash marks. So maybe some more crossing routes, maybe some hitches over the middle that could give the young quarterback a chance to get into a rhythm and start moving the chains for this Rams offense. Our second half kickoff is brought to you by Ollie's VIP Northside, the best local spot to catch sports or hang out with friends. Stop by 36 Veronica Drive in Martinsburg. Ollie's VIP will see you 
for the game. Here on the kick return, Southern Connecticut State's got a hole, but he's slipped <laughs> up by the turf monster, <laughs> Sean Martin, and a flag comes flying in anyway, so it might have been going against Southern Connecticut State as Pena is singling that way, but uh, that could have been a really big return, Travis. <laughs> the dreaded turf monster already in midseason form. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody is. <laughs> but for Shepard, this will back up Southern Connecticut State to start the second half. Maybe it's just because we're kind of used to the Shepard program a little bit more, but it just feels like if Shepard can get one or two big plays and get some momentum, you feel like they'll be okay yeah. and, and get back into this thing and well, potentially and, win it. And what it is is like we're waiting for this team to establish their own identity. Yeah. We know what this team has been in years past, especially with, with Tyson Bajan at the helm. So now we're waiting to see who's going to be the guy. If you look at that Shepard record book, there's been a bunch of dudes that have come through this program. Yeah. Again, Tyson Bajan there at the top life of the list. Tyson yes, Bajan. there was life, life before. Life will go on without <laughs> <Yes>. Tyson Bajan. <laughs> then we're just waiting to see who that next dude is for this Rams team. They'll run here on first down. Can't tell if that was Gray or Martin in the backfield, but stacked up there. Looks like might be a new running back. I can't read a number there. Might be 15 there again, Martin. Here we go. Second down and 10. There's no gain on that previous play. Yes, that is Martin in the backfield to the left of Ridley. 10 seconds on the play clock, and Ridley runs it with Martin again. He goes up the middle, bounces off Bednarski, and finds some... Room up the middle there. Looked like Mason Newton came in on that play. Making a good job. Looked like there's going to be a hole there up the middle, but those defensive ends able to crash down inside and gobble up the running back. And that is something that has been consistent with that Rams defense. You might see that hole there initially, but they do such a good job of reading and reacting, shedding blocks, and then making the tackle, not giving up a lot of yards after contact. 13 38 to go in this third quarter. Ridley in the shotgun. Southern Connecticut State leads by seven. Shepard showing blitz at the line of scrimmage. They do bring the pressure. And it's thrown in a completion to Papalo for a first down and more. In coverage for Shepard was McDowell as they move the ball up to the nine yard line. Because Southern Connecticut State, it's a first and ten now for the Owls. Good pass there on the. Good pass, from Ridley. Yeah, good pass protection. The Ram, Rams dialed up some pressure on that play. We'll run Martin again. So far again, Shepard has stopped the run consistently, but Southern Connecticut State continues to go at them with the run. Because the run game pays dividends that don't necessarily show up in the stat sheet. Like we mentioned, they're not getting big chunks as far as yards per carry, but what it is doing is keeping the offense on schedule. It's wearing down that defensive front for the Rams, and it's going to set up play action pass. So a, a lot of benefits can come out of just consistently sticking with that run game. Also, you can burn a lot of time off of that clock and keep that offense on the sideline for the Rams. One of the few seniors on this offensive line of Southern Connecticut State either cramping up or dealing with an injury there, it's Liam Flight, a 6'5", senior offensive lineman from Blackwood, New Jersey. And he's a transfer from Rutgers University as well, and He's down on the field right now at around the 26-yard line. They're going to help him to his feet. Not certain if it was a cramp or what the situation is. He is limping a little bit, but looks like it could just be a cramp. Like we mentioned, it's a warm warm day down there. First game of the season for both of these ball clubs. So that adrenaline is going to burn up that conditioning, and you're going to have some issues with cramps here early on. And even hotter down there on the turf. Second down and nine for the Owls with 12.35 to go in this third quarter. Ridley in the shotgun formation. Three receivers set. And he'll go Martin off that right side. And, again, Martin doesn't find much room, but gets positive yardage off the right side. Looked like O'Neal was in on that tackle, along with uh, Robbie Hart. The Owls trying to run behind their big right tackle, Eric Suda, the junior, 6'6", 290 pounds. 
So we got back to the line of scrimmage on that run that Southern Connecticut stayed. It's third down and nine. Under 12 minutes to play in the third. 14 to seven. Owls on top. Ridley in the shotgun formation, adjusting things at the line. Receivers moving around. Papalo, the receiver here to the near side. As Ridley takes the snap, has time to throw, now rolls out to the right. Looks downfield and throws complete. First down and more into Shepard territory. Goes Sean Martin out of the backfield. That looked like an adjustment on the route that Ridley kind of called out as he was rolling to the right. And and that's something that a veteran quarterback can bring to your offense, able to use his mobility, extend that play, and then, like you said, directing traffic. Martin's initial route was just to go out in the flats, but as Ridley sees there was nothing behind him, directs him down the field, and he's able to throw a precision pass to pick up a big play for the Owls offense. Now some no huddle from... Keith Ridley and the Owls offense as they dump it down to Martin on first and ten, and he gets another positive game out of the backfield on the reception across the 40. Down to about the 39-yard line. And this is more the usual role that Martins plays in this offense. Is he's more that change of pace back, the third down back that can come out of the backfield. The, he's had to take on more of a load so far today with Gray being a bit dinged up in the first half, but so far he's been able to make some much-needed plays for Southern Connecticut State. It's a seven-yard gain on first down, bringing it to second down and three for the Owls with 10.35 to go in this third quarter. 14-7 Southern Connecticut State. Ridley again will go Martin. Martin off the right side, gets close to the sticks, continues to fight through that Shepard D line. Things getting a bit chippy down there. And again, the Owls running behind that big left guard, Dan Schwartz, was able to get the assist early on for that second touchdown yeah. that Martin was able to punch it in. New running back checking into the game John for Southern Connecticut. A Manning. Well, I'll go with it. Coming into the game as it will be third and one from the 37, 38-yard line. 38-yard line, third down and one from the 38, 9.51 to go. He's already burning some time off this clock as Southern Connecticut State. It's oh. a high snap. It goes over the head of Keith Ridley, and he'll have to dive back on top of it at the 45-yard line. That is a drive killer for the Owls. And again, when you're able, you have to switch out your center. Leo Jolly coming in for an injured flight. The flight's still over there on the sidelines, and sometimes uh, you get it. Center in there that... Well, especially he probably didn't have many practice snaps either, so you come in, it's hot, your hand's yeah. probably a little sweaty. Yeah. You shoot a fly ball over the quarterback's head on third and short, and now you got a punt. Yeah, that's tough. Really just completely killed the drive, because even if you didn't get it, you were probably going for it, but now you're going to be forced to punt, and you burned a lot of clock, but no results on it. Greer will field it at the 15. Get across the 20. Still has room down the sideline. There goes Greer. 30, 25, 20. And he's going to take it back for a Shepard touchdown. And that could be the play that they were looking for. Miles Greer returns it. 85 yards for a Shepard touchdown on his first touch of the second half. 14 13 our score with 8.40 to go in the third quarter. Miles Greer. With a big punt return. The momentum might have just shifted in the favor of the Rams. I mean, the defense is going to have to go back out there. That's the only <laughs> negative, but they'll take it when the offense has struggled. James Bozick on the attempt to point after Miles Greer, a guy that is doing the punt returning, and I'm not certain if he would be if Rodney Dorsey was out there. But the extra point is up and good. He's listed as Dorsey's backup on our 2 deep. And we don't really know if Dorsey's dealing with an injury or we know there's been some eligibility questions around Shepard, so don't know if they're holding him out because of that. But uh, either way, certainly making a case that regardless of how that pans out, how that situation pans out, that he should be the guy back there returning kicks. And like we mentioned early on in the first half, 
we're going to have to get some points from different places on this Shepherd Rams defense. It can't be all on the offense. It's got to be all hands on deck and no better place than to do that than to get big special teams plays, and that's certainly going to get the crowd energized here at Rams Stadium. I thought for sure Greer would have stepped out of bounds on that far sideline. I think maybe Because it was the tight sideline, but he had a convoy of blockers over there. Yeah, maybe that's what Southern Connecticut State thought as well, but Miles Greer gets the big punt return, and it would help too for Shepard to have a guy that's not supposed to be your slot receiver being your punt return guy. I think yeah. that's a positive thing if Dorsey does come back and is able to play this season. So big punt return there from the freshman, Miles Greer, out of Springfield, Virginia. Played at South County High School. So big return there for Miles, and he's had some nice returns earlier, and there he breaks one. And now you see the result of a bad snap. That's a big swing for this game. You go from a third and short, look like the Owls offense is driving. It's third and short. You get a bad snap. Then they're forced to punt on that punt. Big return by Greer. Now the game's tied up. The Rams feel a little bit more energized, a little bit more confident. Now the Owls pressure's back on them. Bozik boots it away, fielded around the five-yard line. For Southern Connecticut State, Sean Martin on the return gets it across the 35-yard line before he's brought down on that far sideline. It wasn't Martin on that I think it was Terrence Robinson, freshman running back, 5'9", 170 pounds from Middle Island, New York. You figured that they're going to make that change back there as far as kick returns with Martin now having to shoulder the load here for the rest of the game. But as soon as I say that, Elijah Gray goes back out there. Looks like he's moving a little bit better than what he was at the end of the first half. Our third quarter presented to you on TV 10 by Smallwood and Small Insurance in Martinsburg, your total insurance solution at 121 Administrative Drive. Call 304-263-3361. First down and 10 from the 31. Ridley going to go play action and look deep. Near sideline, it's complete. Out of bounds goes... Luke Gadsden on the reception, his second catch. He had that big screen play earlier. It's a first down and 10 now for Southern Connecticut State. Southern Connecticut State has had success with those waggle plays with the quarterback getting out into space, extending plays, and he does a good job of rolling out to his offhand side. That's not an easy thing. You don't see many guys in the NFL being able to do that, but really certainly, certainly showing an aptitude here for today, and the Owls able to take advantage of that. You bring in Allen, they know he's been the big banger, so the defense is going to have to respect his running ability. They bite on the fake, and it opens up that play-action pass. Gray in the backfield. They'll give it to him here on first down and 10, and he rams into Kevin Kowser on a short carry. Also, Elijah Queen. In yeah, actually, I think that was yeah. Queen. I got him confused with the 50s. Look like again, it always looks like hey, there's the hole there. Then boom, the doors quickly close. That Rams defense, they're so good at just reading, they're just good at diagnosing plays, reading and reacting. And in particular, they're shedding blocks and making plays. Shepard making some changes, going with a three down lineman set here on second down and eight from the 47. Ridley looking to throw. Rams bring some pressure. Ridley scrambles out to the right. Keith Ridley gonna chuck it. An incomplete. Derek Adamez in coverage. A flag down in the backfield. I believe that one's going to be holding on Carew Gomes, the left tackle. Looked like but Devine pass. Edwards, the intended receiver. What are you saying there, Travis? I was going to say the wide receiver that was streaking across the middle. I believe it was uh, Ryan Souls. It was Ryan Souls was going across the middle, and he got picked up. By the Rams defender Cole Scott. Cole Scott had a handful of jersey from sideline to sideline, but the referees missed that one. Never happened if they didn't call. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Seven and four to go <laughs> here in this third quarter. Fourteen to fourteen, our score between Shepherd and Southern Connecticut State. Nick Verzellini, Travis Smith, happy to have you with us for Shepherd Rams football. We'll have every game this year. No conflicts with the Martinsburg Bulldogs, so. We'll get to go to Lockheed and Travis. Looking forward to it. <laughs> <laughs> Keith Ridley in the shotgun formation. Second down and long. They'll run the ball with Martin. Martin sheds off a tackle of Vanilio Pena and gets it close to the first down marker before he's tackled by Komayao. Good cut by Martin. Even better block that time by Gadsden out there on the edge. 
That's what you want out of your wide receivers. And you look at Gatson, they only have him listed as six foot, 195 pounds, but he certainly seems to be playing a lot bigger than that today. And when you get big runs out of the running game, it's usually because of wide receivers downfield putting in work for you. Third down here. And momentarily here, we'll send it after this third down play to Dylan Bishop, who will have Tyson Bajant. As we have right, third down downs. here on the field with Chicago Bears quarterback Tyson Bajant. Uh, Tyson, first of all, how's it feel to be able to have me say that, Chicago Bears quarterback Tyson, after the after the roster cut down? Yeah, I think it's a dream come true. And, uh, you know, it was really rewarding because it was really hard. You know, the process was hard, had to be really locked in. So. For everything to work out in the way it did, I'm just, you know, extremely humble and grateful for the opportunity. How's your weekend in the Panhandle been back here today and at Martinsburg yesterday? Unreal. There's no better place in the whole United States than right here in the Eastern Panhandle, and especially here at Ram Stadium during this game. You know, I don't think, I don't remember last time I had this much fun. Right, how you feeling about the Bears going into week one? I feel good. I feel like everybody's locked in. I feel like we had some uh, bumps and bruises that have been taken care of, um, and we're ready to roll. All right. Uh, last but not least, what have you seen from the Rams here so far? How do you hope they're going to build on what we've done so far? As they return the punt here, almost got another one. Yeah, I'll tell you, I see that punt returner. That's a, you know, they said he's a freshman. He looks good. Um, you know, everybody's playing hard. We got new guys that are now top guys, um, and so it's exciting. I think you know they're going to they've done a good job getting back into the game, and now I think it's full steam ahead. You know, they're the best coach team in the country, and uh, I think that'll start showing later on and as the game goes. All right, Tyson, thanks for giving us a couple minutes. Let you enjoy the game. Back to you, Nick and Travis. Thank you, Dylan. Thank you, Tyson, as well. The legend, Tyson Bader. 14 14, 5 17 to go in this third quarter. As Shepard gets the stop there, Travis, a big stop, and now an opportunity to take the lead, continue on that momentum that Greer was able to give them on the punt return, first down 10 from the 30. They'll run it with Malachi Brown, and Brown is stopped at the line of scrimmage. Malachi Brown, trust your instincts. You saw it. Don't hesitate. There was a huge hole backside, and that's one of the things you have to keep your eyes open for when you're running in a zone running scheme like that. There was a huge gap backside. Put your foot in the ground and attack that hole. You saw it. Trust your instincts, young man. I'm not sure how much running back he's played. He's a converted wide receiver. I know he played wide receiver at Hedgesville and Martinsburg. As we have an injury, let's go ahead and take a 30-second break. This is Shepard Rams Football on TV 10 and WRNR TV on YouTube. This is Senator Patricia Rucker. My record shows that I have led the fight for legislation to provide opportunity for West Virginians, strengthen families, protect our children, and improve education. But there is more work yet to do. West Virginia is on the rise, but we're still playing catch up. That's why I'm asking for your vote so that I can go back to Charleston and continue the progress we have made. Paid for by Rucker for West Virginia, Mike Holtz, treasurer, rucker wvcom We welcome you back here to Ram Stadium. Shepard tied at 14 with Southern Connecticut State. It's a second down and nine play for the Rams with Morgan in the pistol formation, two receivers come to the near side for the Shepard. Rosnage going in motion from left to right. They'll run Malachi Brown again, and this time he goes right up the middle, following his offensive line. Like Chandler Brown leading the way to the left tackle. There you go. That was a play that looked very familiar from last year. The Rams had success running that power. A lot of times it was McCook in the backfield that was that kick-out block, and then you got that backside guard that's pulling around, loading up to that play side linebacker, and Malachi Brown again, young running back showing good patience on that play, hitting the hole. Two-yard gain. Here's a throw. Tipped at the line and incomplete. Houghton getting his big paw up there, the 5'11", 195-pound junior cornerback. Yeah, he's been flying all over the place. As he's listed as a corner, but it seems like he's been playing a little bit of safety, playing up toward the line a little bit, and they're coming on a blitz and knocks that pass away. So it'll be fourth down and seven. It was intended for Jeremiah Taylor, and the Rams will be forced to punt. So that momentum still could be you know, going either way. It felt like maybe Shepard had an opportunity to shift things in their favor if they were able to get a touchdown drive there, but instead it's a punt. 
4.18 to go in the third. Barrick will kick it away. Papalo fields it on the run. Terry trying to bring him down. Papalo making some men miss and then is brought down on the play. Look to be Gianni Gamble in the tackle there for Shepard. Gamble, a bigger defensive back, 6'2", 190-pound junior from Cincinnati, Ohio, transferring in from Lackawanna. That is a quality program. You see a lot of teams in the PSAC. Don't mind at all taking those players from Lackawanna. Well, Papalos from Lackawanna, <laughs> Lackawanna as well, and Dwayne Grantham, of course. Yeah. So Lackawanna transfer. So Definitely a, a great place to find some talent. First down and 10 here from the 30-yard line for Southern Connecticut State. Ridley rolling to the right, looking deep down the field. Leaping Papalo, and it's incomplete. Papalo had a shot at it, then he had to quickly turn into a defender and knock it out of the hands. McDowell was coming in. Yeah, it looked like McDowell almost had a shot at it. Yeah, it it, it was kind of a weird play. It kind of looked like it was going to sail on Papalo, so he knocked it to himself, and then it looked like McDowell almost came in and picked it off on a diving attempt. But it heads out of bounds. An incomplete second down and ten. Good, good time to take a shot. They haven't really thrown it down the field too much here in this uh, ball game. So yeah, a lot of rollouts, a lot of stuff to the sidelines. You're just relying on your veteran wide receivers to find those soft spots in the zone, and they've had success doing that. But like you mentioned, haven't really attacked down the field. And one of the ways you don't want to do that, one of the reasons why you don't want to do that, because the Rams have historically had a really good pass rush, and those plays like that take time, and you don't want to give that time to those defenders to get in the backfield and. Take shots on your quarterback. Second down and ten, another kind of high snap. They'll run off the right side, no real room. Again, Shepard continuing to be solid on the run defense. Looked like Jack Baxter coming up to make that play. And Flight is back in there at center. But like you mentioned, the quarterback had to leave his feet to get the ball. And on plays like that, when you're trying to hit it really quick out of that pistol formation, a high snap can really throw off the timing in the backfield. Like, you really need that snap to be chest high or right at the belt buckle so that quarterback can use that fake. And sometimes, or a lot of times, there's some type of play action option off of that play. So a high snap can really wreak havoc on the timing in the backfield. Pablo and Souls, the receivers here to the near side as Ridley takes the snap. Ridley throws and incomplete. Dante Harrison in coverage intended for Papalo, and it will be another punt for the Owls. As and a miscommunication between Papalo and Ridley on that play where it looks like Ridley thought he was going to continue running towards the sidelines, and Papalo just settled down in the zone. So, again, the Owls dealing with their offense, they have several new people in new places, so they're still trying to get their timing and chemistry down as well, and it showed up on that play. Miles Greer. Again, back deep. He had the punt return touchdown of 85 yards for Shepard to tie this game at 14 here in this third quarter. 3-12 to go in the third. And Piccarelli will punt it away. This time he'll kick it away from Greer. He's had back-to-back good returns. He'll let it bounce and roll all the way down to about the 21-yard line. And you got a talented punter right there in Piccarello. That time using a rugby-style punt. Now, usually early on in the game it was just a traditional straight down the field, punting the ball, and he was getting good distance, but Greer got good returns. So now you roll him out. One, you make that coverage. Have to pay attention to him because you can easily slip in a fake if he continues to run, but when he's able to do that directional kick, really limits the ability or the opportunity for that to get a good return on. Piccarelli led the NE10 in punt yardage last season. Not really a stat you want your team to have, but because that means you're probably punting a lot. Yes. But one thing you can look at, he did average 36 yards per punt, so he is able to do it one at a time as well. And a penalty there on the play. And that's that's unique. Going against Southern Connecticut State. Him being able to switch up his punting styles. Usually you see if he's a rugby-style punter, that's the way he punts all the time. It's not too often that you can see a punter that can switch it up from your traditional punting stance and using that rugby-style punt. New receiver on the field here for Shepard. As on the penalty, the Rams will take over with pretty good field position here at the 37-yard line. New receiver there is Marion Haley, number eight, a James Madison transfer. 
He is the receiver to the near side of Cordell Batten in the slot. And then I think that is or that is Barry Hill on the far side. So Taylor out of the game here. Hopefully not dealing with any sort of injury. But Haley, a James Madison transfer, so certainly has some talent. As they'll run Malachi Brown. Brown gets all off that left side following his tight end, Dustin Fisher. And is brought down on the play by Watson. Moves the ball to the 40-yard line. Will be second down for Shepard. And now Watson limping off the field. You don't have to do that. You can just go down. But he gets off. And Evan, I'm sorry. All right, so Jackson Curran back Walker in the game. coming in. Yep, so Jackson back Taylor. in the game. Taylor, I mean, yes. Here on second down and seven from the 40. Morgan throws off the hands of Dustin Fisher and incomplete. That's a dangerous one. Gets tipped. My Fisher looked like in coverage was Brian Barnes. Yeah, Dominic was in coverage as well. Barnes kind of laid the boom, and I think he might have hit Dominic as he's grabbing at his stomach area. That one, that was, you could see where the receiver kind of took his eyes off of the ball for a moment, seeing that linebacker closing in. Don't blame him. Not at all. <laughs> They're down seven from the 40-yard line, 2.15 to go in this third quarter, tied at 14. And another flag comes in. So offense is really struggling in the second half. And that's the thing. Even when, even when the Owls offense is out there, they may not be scoring points or doing a lot with it. But what they're doing is just eating up a lot of clock, and that's keeping that Rams offense on the side. So you got a team that's looking to get some type of rhythm going, and you're making them stand over there for large chunks of time. It just makes it that much more difficult once they do get out there, and then you're going to have some – Ticky-tack penalties like that where you're going to have a, a false starter or things of that nature that are just going to slow down your drive because you start out ahead of the chains, now you're third and long. Third and 12. Morgan guns it over the middle and incomplete. Intended for Jeremiah Taylor, who's slow to get up. He'll trot off the field. The Rams will be forced to punt on fourth down and 12 as Morgan showing the arm strength, but sailed that pass incomplete. Trying to fit it into a tight window there. And it looks like that Al's defense was ready for it because of the Rams, everybody else were running goes. They were just trying to run the defense off and create a little bit of space underneath for the wide receiver to catch it, but those Al defenders able to drop off of the deep routes and come up and really squeeze that window and make it a tough pass. Punt here from Barrick is a high punt. Waving for a fair catch is Papalo and around the 27, 28 yard line. And Southern Connecticut State fought that Shepard made contact with him. I'm not certain if they did or not. Didn't really look like it from my angle. But, but hats off to Papalo for catching that one cleanly because he had no room for error on that play. Yeah, I don't, I don't really know how guys do that. I could never be a potter turner <laughs> for multiple reasons. But. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you clarified that. <laughs> Not really known for my speed. I say you are known as being an, an, an explosive athlete. <laughs> I mean, like the, the fear of getting hit would yeah. also yeah. get to me as well. I you got like. 11 freight trains running down the field. That's just hard to concentrate on the football. Here's the run up the middle with Martin. And there they find a little bit more room with that running game, Travis. And as we get toward this fourth quarter, it could be one of those big things because Southern Connecticut has ran the ball well over 30 times at this point and just continue to try to find something. And then you hope by the time the fourth quarter comes around in, in a tied game, defense has been on the field for a long time, you can break some big ones. Yeah, I mean, and it's nothing fancy, and it's a smart move for the Owls. You stay ahead of the change, your offense is on schedule, you're eating up time, and you're not risking the ball. 120 to go in this third quarter, second down and seven. They'll go play action, a high pass. Nearly intercepted intended for Papel. A lot of high passes now on both sides. That time, I think, be third down. I, I think the pressure in his face that time by Cole Scott 
forced him to throw the ball a little bit high, but Papalo has had some success finding space in that slot area. And you see the Rams' defense, they've made that adjustment where it's not as easy to get him the ball in the second half as it was in the first half where he was able to come up with a couple of crucial catches for that Owls offense. One fifteen to go in the third. Third down and seven from their own 32. Ridley, four receiver set. They're going to throw again. Shepard brings some pressure. He gets hit as he throws, and it's caught on the run in stride by the Owls. It's caught by Hetmer, and he is all the way inside the 15-yard line before being brought down. Big play there for Southern Connecticut State. And he's just staring down the barrel of the defense. He took a shot in the backfield coming from Kamigao. There is a flag on the play. I wonder if it's going to go against Shepard for the hit on Ridley. I don't think it was that. I think it was in the secondary. It's going to be defensive pass interference because Hetmeyer had to fight through some traffic to get that ball. Yeah. What a throw by Keith yeah. Ridley considering he got drilled yeah. on that Yeah, I mean, throw. he took one right in the chops. In the NFL, that would have been a penalty. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody would have had a letter waiting for him the next day for a fine. Well, it depends on who you are. Too. <laughs> that is... <laughs> Ridley standing in here on first down and ten you for the Rams from the sixteen or for the Owls, excuse me, from the sixteen yard line of Shepard, fifty seconds to go in this third quarter. Four receivers again. Ridley standing in, dumps it down in the flat to Sean Martin. Martin makes a man miss. Martin dies for the end zone. Touchdown, Southern Connecticut State. They've taken the lead here. 38 seconds to go in this third quarter. And, Travis, they got to be aware of that. They've been running that play all day to Martin. He's shown so far that he has good hands out of the backfield. They do that flare pass to the short side of the field. Martin able to do it all on his own. And, again, this Owls offense, they are perfectly content to stay conservative. They're not going to try to risk it unless they absolutely have to. That time, a high percentage throw out to the running back. It was nothing but green space in front of him. He was able to make an incredible play there towards the pylon. And, again, this Owls offense just seeming up to the challenge today. Extra point is up and no good. That could be big Ooh. here in this ball game. 20 to 14 on our score. 38 seconds to go in the third. Let's take a 30 second break. This is Shepherd Rams football on TV 10 and WRNR TV on YouTube. Remember when you were a little kid and saw your first deer? Oh, how cute. As an adult, maybe you've had a different experience. Where'd that come from? Bambi mess up your dream machine? Call Cody's Auto Body today at 304-901-4777 and get the work done right the first time. Cody's Auto Body, 851 Wilston Street in Martinsburg, has a team of auto body professionals with a lifetime of experience putting your ride back together again, regardless of how it got that way. Cody's Auto Body. We welcome you back here to Rams Stadium. 20-14, to 14, Southern Connecticut State missing the point after the drive capped off with the Sean Martin 16-yard touchdown reception, taking a lot of time off that clock as well as Southern Connecticut State is on the board, taking the 20-14 to 14 lead, and Shepard continuing to struggle here in this second half. We'll see if they can do some things in the fourth quarter, but our scoring drive summary is brought to you by Paul Espinoza for State Senate, an effective, fiscally conservative voice for the 16th District. 38.8 seconds to go. In the third quarter, 2014, Al's on top of the Rams. Shepard sends Brown and Hill back deep. And this kick will go to Barry Hill. They'll field it around the three-yard line. Hill across the 20, across the 30. Excuse me, that was not Hill. That is Marion Haley on the return. But he gets a solid return out to about the 35-yard line. Brian Barnes on the stop, able to clip him on his heels that time and making a saving tackle. There was a lane right there. Yeah, the special teams has been a real positive, I think, today for Shepard. Besides one punt return for Southern Connecticut State being pretty good. Uh, other than that, Rams have looked good on both sides for the Shepard for the Special teams. Three receivers go to the far side here on first and ten. They'll run Malachi Brown. He finds a lane Good off run. that left side to about the 39, 40-yard line. It will be second down and short 
The Rams have had some consistent success running behind big left tackle Chandler Brown. And right now, I think Wyatt Pelicano is still dealing with that injury, so Curtis Jefferson has filled in and has done a nice job. They'll run off left side again, and Brown scampers forward for the first down. It'll be first and ten when we come back for the fourth quarter. Our score, Southern Connecticut State 20, Shepard 14 as we... We'll have the fourth quarter on the other side of this break. Let's take a one-minute break. This is Shepherd Rams football here on TV10 and WRNR TV on YouTube. We're back in one minute. I'm Jonathan Bodwell, Bodwell Insurance Solutions, your local Medicare and life insurance agency. We are here to help you navigate the Medicare maze. We represent all of the major carriers, and you do not pay any more to go through us than if you go directly through a carrier. But if you go through us, you have a local professional to help you with all your Medicare needs, not a voice that could be in some other part of the world. Bodwell Insurance Solutions, your local Medicare agency. BodwellInsuranceSolutions.com or 304-283-0864. Mayhem is everywhere. I'm your new bangs, and you can't stop staring at me. That's it. Just tilt the rearview mirror over here. And while you're checking me out more times than a library book, your car is wandering into that lane over there. More bangs? <laughs> Neat. And if you've got cut rate insurance, you could be paying for this yourself. So get Allstate. Call Martinsburg Allstate agent Gary Kelly today at 304-263-4596. We welcome you back here to Ram Stadium. Our score, Southern Connecticut State 20, Shepard 14. Our third quarter was brought to you by W. Harley Miller Systems, providing custom integration services like home and office automation, home theater networking, audio, video distribution, and more. Call 304-350-1931 or visit whmsystems.com. So we begin the fourth quarter brought to you by Smallwood and Small Insurance and Martins Rigger Total Insurance Solution at 121 Administrative Drive. Call 304-263-3361. And Dutch Miller Auto, Mative Group, home of friends and family pricing. First and 10 from the 46 for the Rams. They'll run it with Malachi Brown again. And Brown this time stacked up after a short gain. The cello in there on the tackle. Also in there with the assist is Tariq Hollingsworth. The six foot one, two hundred thirty pound senior inside linebacker. That's a good from, name from Brooklyn, New York. Yeah, Tariq Hollingsworth, <laughs> senior, making the tackle there. Second down and eight after the two yard carry. Morgan in the shot or in the pistol, excuse me. Seth will go play action. Roll to the right, under some pressure, throws it back to the near side, intended for Malachi Brown, and out of bounds. Smartly throwing that one away. It'll be third and eight, though, for Shepard. So, not wanting to risk it. It looked like Hill may have been open in the flat. They've had success with that play earlier in the game, but I believe there was a defensive back over there that was lurking, waiting to pounce on that, and then he went to look for the throwback option and then just decided to go ahead and throw it away, and sometimes that, that's the best option is to throw it away, live to fight another day. Third down and eight from their own 48. Fisher going in motion. Morgan looking to throw. Morgan throwing it deep downfield. It looks to be underthrown. Leaping up and making the catch is Cordell Batten. Batten at the 20-yard line. The freshman rising up and making a heck of a catch. He's only five foot 10, 154 pounds. He looked like Megatron on that one. <laughs> And one of the few times that the linebacker Barnes has been caught out of position. He's done a good job up towards the line of scrimmage making plays, but once you get him deep in coverage like that, he's matched up one-on-one -on -one in a wide receiver. That is a matchup that is in favor of that Rams offense. So run Brown again, juking in the backfield, and Too much. doesn't hit the hole and ends up being brought down. There's Barnes again <laughs> in on the tackle. He's like, that's what I'm here for. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm here to make tackles in the backfield. I can't be covering little wide receivers 15 yards down the field. Along with Hassan Dominic leading the way for Southern Connecticut State. So kind of a risky throw there by Morgan, but it ends up working for a big gain. Second down and 10 now for the Rams from the 18-yard line of the Owls trying to take the lead on this drive. And during our travels over the PSAC, you see some good inside linebackers, but I'll tell you what, you have to put Hassan Dominic up there among the best of them. He, he does the job. Morgan blow inside, crack by Dominic. Takes the helmet off as well. What a hit. 
Morgan will now have to come out of the game. Lech Powell will trot on for Shepard as Hassan Dominic just blew him up off that blind side. Untouched getting into the backfield. Luckily, he Morgan holds on to yeah, that football. I like, that's incredible that he didn't fumble that play. Like that, we talk about Hassan Dominic and right on cue, he knocks the stuffing out of Morgan. And the gravy. <laughs> Third and forever for Lech Powell. Powell under pressure. He's going to look to run right away and get brought down after maybe a gain of one on the play. It'll be fourth and 16, seven, 15 or so from the 24-yard line. Seth will check back in, I believe, as he only has to be out for a play. And now Morgan does trot back onto the field. It's an interesting call for this They're gonna Rams go for offensive it, huh? unit. They're going to go for it. They're kind of in a bad spot. Too far for a field goal, not quite far enough to try to punt, so why not roll the dice and see what you can do? Morgan looking to throw on fourth down. Morgan throwing it up for Batten again. Did he catch that? Oh, my Great gosh. Finish. Cordo Batten, you're ridiculous. What a catch. In the air, he got hit hard as well, flipped over. Helmet came off of Figora, who made the hit. He'll run off the field, but Cordell Batten, Already turning into a star for the Rams in his first game. What was that? Fourth and 15? Yeah. And Morgan able to squeeze that one into a window. And Batten gets up ended, but still able to come down with the ball and move the chains for this Rams offense. First down and goal. The Rams will run it with Malachi Brown. Brown pushing forward. He's into the end zone. Touchdown, Shepard. And we are tied at 20 with 11.24 to go in this fourth quarter. Brown able to break a tackle. He got hit about two yards deep by junior defensive back Chris White, able to come back there, not able to bring him down. And Malachi Brown, like we mentioned, a former wide receiver, but he has shown he does not shy away from contact in between the tackles. And on that play, able to take it off of the right side and punch it in, putting the Rams in position to take the lead if they're able to have a successful extra point. James Bozick on for the point after the kick is up, and it is... Straight through. 21-20. Shepard, 11-24 to go in this fourth quarter. Let's take a 30-second break when we return. We'll have more Shepard Rams football here on TV10 and WRNR TV on YouTube. This is Senator Patricia Rucker. My record shows that I have led the fight for legislation to provide opportunity for West Virginians, strengthen families, protect our children, and improve education. But there is more work yet to do. West Virginia is on the rise, but we're still playing catch up. That's why I'm asking for your vote so that I can go back to Charleston and continue the progress we have made. Paid for by Rucker for West Virginia, Mike Holtz, treasurer, rucker for wvcom We welcome you back here to Ram Stadium. Shepard taking a 21-20 lead with 11:24 to go in this third quarter and the way the offenses have struggled in this second half even though Southern Connecticut State's coming off of a touchdown drive, Shepard's coming off a touchdown drive that extra point really feels big right now Travis Special teams, they always loom large and they're showing up big for the Rams they were able to make plays on special teams that's putting them in the position that they're in right now up by one here in the fourth quarter and special teams has kind of let the Owls down not able to convert on that extra point and that's always a buzz kill you have a big drive you score a touchdown you want the cherry on top of your Sunday you want to get that extra point when you don't do that you leave the door open for bad things to happen especially in a you know back and forth game where you know if it's a two touchdown lead it doesn't matter as much but in a one touchdown lead, it's like we can give up a touchdown and, and then lose the game on an extra point, which obviously there's a lot of time left, so we don't know if that's going to be the case. 11 24 as the kick goes out of bounds. But on that drive, Shepard goes down the field. Cordell Batten makes some ridiculous catches in some big situations, and then Malachi Brown punches it in for six. The Rams take the one point lead. Our scoring drive summary brought to you by Paul Espinoza for State Senate. An effective fiscally conservative voice for the 16th district. First down and 10 from the 25 for the Owls. Keith Ridley and the offense trotting back onto the field. 
They're trying to get some go something going again against this veteran Rams defense. Can they step up for Shepard? They had some time to get some rest. Ridley starts off under oh. center, fumbled the snap, hands it off to the new running back in the ball game. It is. It's John A. Manning. 5'11", 205-pounder from Newington, Connecticut. Really good size for a running back. You get around 5'11", 215, 210. They need something a little bit bigger, I think, to run in between the tackles is what they're looking for with Gray out of the game and, and Martin being more of that third down back. He's done a nice job, though, in, in Gray's relief. Second down and five after the five-yard carry. 10.45 and rolling here in this fourth quarter. Shepard on top by one. They'll run a Manning again off the right side, and he is going to be short of the first down marker. Mike Forbes making the tackle along with Kamiyao. Kamiyao and trying to get a number there, 40, 14. Is that Miles Greer coming in and making a tackle? <laughs> <laughs> it is. He's doing it all over the place. Yeah. He's a 5'11", 185-pound freshman defensive back from mm -hmm. Manassas, Virginia, from Princeville District High School. So Greer with the big punt return touchdown in there. Nice tackle on that one. Third down and two. Shepard operating, or I'm sorry, Southern Connecticut State operating with just over 10 minutes to go in this fourth quarter. Low snap this time. They'll give it to a Manning, and he runs for the first down. Coming down, coming up and making the tackle. On with Aguilar, it looked like. We mentioned how the center for Southern Connecticut State went out early on. Liam Flight, he's back out there, but he's it's obvious that he's not 100%. He's having a difficult time moving around, and you have to get into a stance, and they're asking a lot of him. They have the quarterback under center, then he's back in shotgun or pistol, so... It's not, not, not in the old days where it's just going to be under center all day where it might not be as glaring. Those snaps and shotgun and pistol, those are precision plays. And right now he, he's having some difficulty getting the ball to the quarterback cleanly. First and 10, 9.20 to go. Ridley handing it off again to Manning. Manning running off that left side. And they've put him into this game. They now get it out to the 41-yard line. It's a gain of five, second down and five. And it feels like, Travis, that their goal is to take as much clock as possible here and, and potentially take the lead on a touchdown yeah, or a field goal. Yeah, yeah, they, they want they want to be that last possession. And so far, it's been starting out pretty well again. That they are, they have been content staying with their game plan. That's something that the Rams teams in in the past several years have been very good at doing is putting up so many points you get a team to abandon their game plan, but they haven't been able to score points like that today, and the Owls have been able to stick to the game plan. Manning is stuffed in the backfield by JT Kamayao, leading the charge, and Anilio Pena cleans it up for Shepard, and that's a huge stop because now they have to throw here on third down, you would think. If you can get five yards on first down, follow that up with a two- or three-yard run, then it's third and manageable. You have two downs to get three or two yards, but instead yeah, great, you know, it's now third yeah, and long. So. Great defensive call that time using that run blitz. And Kamiyao able to get up through the middle untouched, and tackling the running back deep in the backfield. And now you go from, like you said, a third and manageable to now more likely a, a third and passing situation. Third down, about seven for Ridley and the Owls offense. They've been able to throw the ball pretty well, though. Ridley throws it underneath in the flat. There's Sean Martin. He tries to go down low and make a big play. He lost his helmet. That's been kind of an issue for the Owls today on both sides. It's going to be fourth and short. Tackled by Dante Harrison. Harrison, we haven't called his name a lot so far today. Not really known for his tackling, but has been in coverage a few times today, and they're going to go for it here on, on their own side of the 50. Fourth down and one from the 45, down by one. You might not get another possession with 7.30 to go and more. A two tight end look. Ridley goes for the QB sneak. It's going to be close. Depends on where they get in the spot. I'm not sure if he got there. It's It's... Really a 50-50 here. It all comes down to essentially where the officials think he was. And is he going to get the right? Get a yard. <laughs> I was like, is he going to get the right foot spot or the left foot spot? I think they're going to give him the first down. So usually, spot there. It's very close. Though. I don't know. They might call for a measurement on this one. I think they have to. 
Meanwhile, a slow offensive lineman getting up off the field, and Amari Brody, injury timeout. I think you got to bring the chains out here. Ball is just short of the 46-yard line. So it just depends on if they had to get to exactly the 46 or the 45 and a half. Here comes the chains. This could determine the chances of a Southern Connecticut State. I mean, there's a lot of time left, but it just feels like that kind of situation where if Shepard can get a run game going. Uh-oh. I think he might It's only going to be about chain length either way. Short by about an inch. <laughs> Shepard football. <laughs> they get the stop on fourth down. Pull out the card. <laughs> Looks like the referees, you know, a bit of showmanship on that one. They like kind of pull the chain a little bit, waiting for the crowd reaction, and then they stick it in the ground. <laughs> it looked like they were trying to pull it as much as they yeah. can. They are PSAC guys. <laughs> oh, I'm just messing. <laughs> the PSAC we, wouldn't be rooting for the West Virginia school. No, anymore, right? not at all. <laughs> First down at 10 from the 45. Shepard takes over. And has a chance to potentially put this one away. Morgan giving it to Malachi Brown, running through the hole. Brown continuing to dance his way forward and oh, find man. yardage. Good run after contact. You don't yeah. expect that from a 185-pound running back, but able to shake off Hassan, Red, uh, Hassan Dominic, which not many people are like able to Hassan do. Hassan Reddick sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> Second down here, another injury on the play for Southern Connecticut State. One thing that worries about worries me when I watch Brown run is he likes to dance a lot in the backfield, which then causes you to be a little bit loose with yeah. the football. So yeah. Hopefully he's able to hold on. We have this injury. I think it's going to be a little bit. Um, no, they're going to get him up, I think. Let's keep it here. As with 7.01 to go. In this fourth quarter, Travis, 21-20. I mean, Shepard's trying to do what it looked like Southern Connecticut State was going to try to do, which is you know, run the football and try to, at the very least, kick a field goal. If you go up by four, you know, they can't beat you with a field goal. That is the injured player is Jaleel Watson, the outstanding inside linebacker. A touchdown. Doesn't put it away either because it would only be an eight-point no. deficit. So. The big test for this Rams offense is can you salt the game away? That's always a big challenge. Sometimes it, you know, it's not going to be pretty. Sometimes you just need to hold on to the ball and grind that clock down. That's Watson down on the field. Looks to potentially just be a cramp as they're trying to get him off early. and He's kind of being, like, dragged off the field in some of this by his teammates there, but... Second down and three for the Rams. I'm a little surprised that Brown has gotten all the carries. I thought we'd see more of Nazir Russell or maybe even uh, Jordan Barnett, the Southern Utah transfer, just because looking at Brown, he is that kind of more receiving back style, but he runs pretty well in between the tackles. Yes, he does not shy away from contact, and as the game has gone on, has done has excelled at breaking tackles. So maybe that's something where they want to establish that, that clear starter before they start, you know, trying to go into a running back by committee. Right. Whistle blown, blows the play dead, and now they'll reset. And I think they have to fix the clock. Well, maybe not. So the clock rolling here, and it, there was a whistle, so I'm just wondering if it should be reset because they stopped the play. But this is... Now killing some significant time here. We had 25 on the play clock, so Shepard can take another 20 seconds here before they have to snap it or so. Second and three, 628 and rolling, 14 on that play clock. Morgan trying to get set now. Also, Shepard's line has been in their stance for a very long time. As Morgan takes the snap, he gives it to Brown, and Brown, ball, ball might have came out. I think he was able to recover it. Looked like he did. He's right at the sticks here for will either be a first down. Yeah, or it's a first. Yep, they're going to give him the first down. So and Looking over at Watson, it doesn't seem to be injured. I think it's more, more of a heat-related issue. They just stuffed some ice inside of his shoulder pads and handed him a Powerade. So 
I, I could go for that myself right now. <laughs> His press box is a little warm. Especially when that sun comes <laughs> yeah. right in. Yeah. But, hey, yeah. it is what it is. We'll, we'll get tougher. <laughs> I don't well, complain about the heat because then I get cold. So I'd rather be hot <laughs> than cold sometimes. But then you complain about being cold. They'll run the ball with Malachi Brown, and he is tackled by, I believe that's Chris White, yes, in on that tackle. Be second down to ten. Maybe a yard on the play. Give him second and nine. Five fifteen to go. Shepard on top, 21-20. From the about the 35-34 yard line, kind of in between those. Line to line of scrimmage. Ten seconds on the playing clock. 457 now. Shepard still on top by one second down and about nine. For the Rams, Morgan takes the snap. He'll run it with Brown off that right side. Brown finds Ford down to about the 30-yard line. And the gain of four will be third and five for Shepard from the 30 of Southern Connecticut State. Brown checks out, gets a much needed rest. Nazir Russell checks in, but you're starting to see this Rams running game now starting to impose its will here in the fourth quarter. That's one of the reasons why you want to run early and often because later on in the game, you're able to make plays like that where you're able to pick up chunks in the run game because you're going up against a tired, beat-up defense. Third down and five, 4.13 to go. Morgan's going to be forced to throw here. Morgan looking deep down the right sideline. It's caught! Did he get a foot in for the touchdown? He did not. Nearly got a foot in on an excellent-looking pass from Seth Morgan down that far right sideline, but Good let off- him just a little bit too much as Taylor couldn't get a foot in. Good offense, but a bit better defense on that play. Quentin Houghton, the junior cornerback, did a good job of using a defensive back's best friend, Sammy Sideline. He's able to ride the wide receiver right out of bounds that time, and Taylor not able to get a foot in to get that touchdown. Good take defense. A, take a 30-second break here as we have a timeout. We'll be fourth down when we come back. A big moment in the game. This is Shepard Rams football on TV 10. We're back in 30. The Skinner family has been representing West Virginians for more than 50 years. We've changed the name of our firm to Skinner Accident and Injury Lawyers because we want to be clear about what we do. We represent people who have been in car, truck, and other catastrophic accidents. We're here to be a voice for the injured and vulnerable, and we take that job seriously with deep commitment to serving our clients wherever they are. Just Google Skinner Accident Lawyer or visit SkinnerWins.com. We'll treat you like family. Here at Rams Stadium, 21-20, our score. Shepard on top of Southern Connecticut State, 4.04 to go. It's going to be fourth down for Shepard, fourth and about five from the 30-yard line of the outs. The Rams trying to extend this drive at the very least. If they can, potentially even put up some points. But on this fourth down, I think, you, know, you took your shot toward the end zone there on third down. I think you're going to probably, your goal is to just get a first down here and extend the drive and burn more time. If you get stopped, Keith Ridley in the offense of Southern Connecticut State will try to go 70 yards and take the lead or even kick a field goal. Let's take the lead as well. Morgan, I'm not sure. That's going to be close. Else. Looked like. Looks like the right tackle might have got out a little yeah, bit quicker. Yeah, so that's big. Banks up another five yards. I mean, you're still going to go for it here, but. Because you can see DeJello over there. He was directing traffic. He was really pointing out that running back, realizing that there's probably going to be a flare out to the flat. Didn't want to give up that play. And offensive line ten. got a little bit spooked that time and got out of there early. But again, the Rams. Batten, <laughs> Taylor, the receivers, along with Barry Hill, the far side receiver. Brown is the back here on fourth down and ten. We've already seen Cordell Batten make some excellent plays on third and fourth down. Morgan under pressure. He's hit by Dominic. Ball comes out. Chandler Brown, I think, grabbed it out of the air. I'm not certain if it would have been a fumble or if his hand was coming forward. It looks like they're ruling fumble. But if that's the case, Southern Connecticut's going to take over an excellent field position now. And again, Hassan Reddick just Dominic. Dominic. Why don't Playing man, like oh, Reddick. Yes. <laughs> Man, oh, man. I mean, it's confusing because he's is. making big plays, and, and Hassan Reddick is, of course, a, a great pass rusher in the NFL for the Eagles. I think he's playing for Yeah. Now. 
But Look, and he has to get carried off the field because he's cramping up. It is a warm day down there. Well, Travis, this is a tough situation for this Rams defense. As that's the one thing about going for it on 4th and 10 after not being 4th and 5. It was a deep drop back for Morgan. He got hit as he tried to get the ball out, lost the football. And now it's 1st and 10 from the Rams, 48. And Southern Connecticut State in no hurry here at 355. They're going to turn around and give it to their running back, a Manning. And a Manning is stacked up in the backfield. Looked like Jack Baxter and Derek Adama is coming through for the Shepard Rams. See the Owls going to more under center. They've had some errant snaps and don't want to risk it that time. So they put their quarterback, Ridley, under center. Gets a clean handoff to the running back, just nothing doing there over that left side. Again, that Rams defense has been really stout versus the run as this game has gone deep into the fourth quarter. It looks like it's about second and 11 here for Southern Connecticut State. A loss of one on the run. Ridley takes the snap. He'll fake it to Martin and roll to the right. Ridley chucking it deep. He's got a wide open Ryan Souls. He comes back and he makes the catch. Inside the five-yard line, Dante Harrison in coverage. The ball was unthrown, or that would have been a touchdown. It just felt like if Southern Connecticut State was going to win this game, they would have to throw the football, and there they complete a deep ball into Ram territory. And again, it's their commitment to the run that set that play up because it was set up with a play-action pass. The quarterback has shown he's very comfortable rolling out of the pocket, and he was able to get the ball over the defense, and Soles coming up with a big catch to put the Owls right here in scoring position. Martin the back to Ridley's left. They'll go Martin running off the left side, leaning toward the end zone, but he's going to be marked about a yard short. Good patience that time by Martin. That hole was not initially there, but he was able to press up into the line of scrimmage. Something opened up on the backside. He was able to make a quick cut and get through a gap and put the ball that much closer to the goal line. Coming up on two minutes to go in this fourth quarter, 21-20, Shepard. Southern Connecticut right on the doorstep of taking the lead. At this point, you're already in field goal range, so I would not expect any passes. Field goal range, you're dead center in the middle of the field goal. So, I mean, you're really in good position right now. They're just going to milk as much clock as they possibly can. Breaking the huddle with six seconds left. I don't know if they want to take up that much time. Two, they gotta... one, they get the snap off. Second and no, goal sir. from the one, and they are stopped. Bednarski coming through to cause some pressure. Think also maybe... looked like Greer was able to get his face in there, too. The freshman getting some valuable time here in today's ball, go, uh, ball game. And we have another cramping offensive lineman for Southern Connecticut State here for a minute 31 left in this one. They are also burning a lot of that time, which would make it very tough on Shepard, I think, to come back if they were to give up a touchdown here, especially a field goal makes it a two-point game. So you want a touchdown, obviously, if you're Southern Connecticut State. And we think James Bozick has a pretty big leg based on what we've seen. He's the kickoff guy. But what is his range? And this would really be his first big kick as a collegiate kicker if, I mean, that's all looking ahead, of course. We never know. Shepard's got in the goal line stand already once. Never know. Could get another one here. But that extra point really kind of in the back of your mind is something that's had a big impact on this game. The missed extra point by Southern Connecticut State. 21-20 our score, minute 33 to go, and Southern Connecticut State with a lineman down. Is that flight again? It looks like it could be. It's a, it's a lot of body. Yeah, that's him, 78 again. Like he's your main guy. <clears throat> I can't tell if it's an 8 or a 0. Say so it's a... But... Well, Tremaine guy is not a starter, so I'm going to presume no, that's that flight. that was flight. Yeah, yeah that's flight. He it came is out. Yeah, he came out earlier in today's game, bit dinged up, so he tried to tough through, go back out in the game, had some errand snaps. He wasn't moving well to begin with. Then you have a big pile of bodies down there towards the goal line, and you can be healthy and not come out of a pile like that, being being able to walk off on your own power. So, third and goal from the one. Minute 33 to go. That in can be this something. We, we had a funky snap quarter. earlier. Yeah. 
when the new guy came in. So pressure's on. Tell you what, I'm going to put a couple of my big defensive linemen right over top of the center. Test his metal a little bit down here on the goal line in a pressure situation. The Manning is the back in the backfield. Ridley lines up under center. They'll run a Manning. He has a hole, and he's into the end zone. Touchdown, Southern Connecticut State, as they take the lead here in this fourth quarter of a minute 28 to go at 26-21, and the extra point running on for the Owls. Sean Martin, I'm sorry, Manning gets in. Three running backs scoring three touchdowns today. That's kind of interesting. Take your hat off to that coaching staff for Southern Connecticut State that they were able to go out have quality depth all the way down the depth chart. Not too often you can go to your third guy and, and, and expect him to make plays, but the depth has proven to be very important for this Owls team where they lost their tight end, they lost their running back, they lost their center, but the next guy's been able to come in and step up and make plays. They're going to go for two to try to make it a seven-point game. And 26-21, they take a timeout. Lined up. They wanted to see how the Rams are going to match up. And Maybe they'll come back out and show the same look with a with an adjustment. Or maybe they just didn't like the look. Call the timeout, get into something that they like a little bit better. Minute 28 to go in this fourth quarter. And we are enjoying some high drama here in week one. Yeah. Last time Shepard lost its season opener was the last time they opened up that home. They lost to Ohio Ohio Dominican. Dominican. Yeah. 24-21 in 2019. Of course, we had the COVID season where Shepard played Mercyhurst, but that game doesn't really count. It does count, but it doesn't count. (laughs) It's funny because Tyson didn't throw a touchdown in the game, but I think his yards and stuff counted. Yeah. I don't remember what exactly what it was, but one of the records he was going for is like if they didn't play that game, he technically wouldn't have gotten the record yet. <laughs> but, yeah, he didn't throw a touchdown. So, I mean, the touchdown record was like the big news. But, anyway, moving on, we got a two-point conversion attempt here for Southern Connecticut State, 26-21, Owls on top. Shepard trying to avoid that loss to the Owls. Ridley. Play action, looking, throws back in the end zone, incomplete. So it's a five-point game at 26-21. Took a shot to Devine Edwards in the back of the end zone. Sophomore wide receiver. Tried to climb up to the top shelf to get it, but it was just a little bit too tall. And we do have a flag on the play, so could be another opportunity for the Owls to to go for two here. Kind of a false start offense. Well, then they'll decline that, obviously. So why wasn't the play blown dead if it was a false start? I don't know. That kind of goes in Shepard's favor because it doesn't give him an opportunity to go again. And and normally on a false start, you would have the play blown dead. And again, a a missing extra point could be the difference. Yeah, and I was going to wonder, I mean, I think you have to go for two there because you missed that extra point. Yeah. But there is that situation of if you go up six – they still have to make the extra point yeah. to, to beat you. And, and as we've seen already, one, one was missed. But I think you do have to go for two there to try to keep the tie in play if Shepard were to get a touchdown. And there's only a minute 28 left. So, I mean, that's plenty of time. But I don't – based on how the Shepard offense has played, you know, you've got to have confidence in your defense, I think, if you're the Owls. Like, they, they've made big plays when they've needed them. But so far, they haven't had a sustained drive, and you really can't waste a lot of time. you got a minute 28 left. It looks like the Rams have one timeout, so the pressure's really on. I still think you have a chance to possibly run it once or twice, possibly a draw play early on in the series. Maybe you could pop something big, but big test for this young offense for Shepard for Shepherd University. Shepard ranked 13th in both of the major preseason polls. Southern Connecticut State was a three-win team last year. It's a big hold on this kickoff return, getting it out to around the 39-yard line on the return. Big there. hit that time by Tariq Hollinsworth. He caught the brunt of it, but again, saving tackles. Looks like that was uh, Marion Haley again on the return for Shepard. So the Rams have had some guys step up in that return spot and in the past, we know when Shepard's won some games at the last second, it's been set up by 
kickoff return. So Haley gets a good one there. 26-21, a minute 22 to go. Seth Moore, excuse me, Seth Morgan in the pistol formation for the Rams. Brown goes out to the motion. They'll dump it down to him in the flat. He makes a man miss. Malachi Brown getting forward. And maybe got a yard on that one. Not a whole lot of room. Looked like Dominic cleaned it up for Southern Connecticut State. Would that be Hassan Dominic? <laughs> it would be Hassan Dominic, yes. But not Hassan Reddick. Yeah, I think he may have used up his eligibility. <laughs> Who knows these days? Yeah. Kofi, Shepard's got to go here. Under a minute, and they burn a timeout. I'm not really sure what this, this like, whole drive has felt weird. You're starting with a play in the flat. Like, I don't, I don't know. And then you kill almost 15, 10, 15 seconds or so just well, ain't waiting they, to go up to the line, and now it's only 51 seconds remaining. And Shepard started out the game with a delay of game, so there have been some issues getting the plays onto the field. So not sure if, it, if it's a technical issue or the plays getting down to the sidelines or just a breakdown in communication from the sidelines out to the field, but the Rams have been getting the ball off late in the play clock that's not really giving them a much time to do much once they get lined up. So it kind of eliminates your possibility of sending guys in motion or, or shifts or things of that nature. And right now, like you mentioned, time is of the essence. You don't have a, any timeouts left at this point. So you got to start making some plays, get some first downs, because that's going to stop the clock. But you got to start moving the ball. they got to start operating with a sense of urgency. Loss of one on that first down play. So it's second and 11. For the Rams, Morgan in the shotgun. You're going to have to trust him to throw it down the field if you want to come back and win this one. Seth Morgan looking deep down the field and nearly intercepted over the head of Cordell Batten and charging in on it was, I believe, Hodden. Or no, excuse me, that was number 21, Figueroa. 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 That's a good name. <laughs> That's a cool name, yeah. <laughs> He charged in, but meanwhile, it's third down and 11 for Shepard on their own 38-yard line. So Batten has 46 been... 46 seconds left. Batten's made some big plays here down the stretch. Morgan takes the snap, looking to throw. Morgan looking deep over the middle. It's caught by Jeremiah Taylor, and he goes down at around the 45-yard line. Morgan threw it by the... Defender, I think that was Dominic in coverage. And, and it was the same play that around. they ran before. Except that time, Taylor was the inside guy. He sat down in the zone, and Morgan was able to deliver a strike. But it was it was the exact same play. 33 seconds to go in this one. Well, same area of the field, I should say. Yeah. First down <laughs> and 10 for the Rams here. Down by 5. 26-21. Southern Connecticut State on top. And Shepard... Four seconds were put back on the clock. Shepard, I guess, has to spike it as the clock's stopping on the first down. And Seth Morgan does spike it with 34.8. So in total, it's about a second, 1.8 seconds or so of difference uh, with the time being put back on the clock. And the, and the stage being set for Seth Morgan to kind of to establish himself here early on in the season. Pressure situation, able to get a big completion to move the chains. Now it's second and ten. You got 34 seconds and change to take the ball 44 yards to pay dirt. Batting goes in motion. Morgan looking to throw deep down the far sideline and caught by Barry Hill. Inside the 20 yard line. Very similar to the play that they ran at the end of the first half. It's a post wheel concept. And again, Hill is that wide receiver that's running from inside, turning up on the sidelines with Taylor bringing all that attention over the middle of the field. He deserves that attention, and Hill able to get down the sidelines. And again, Seth Morgan able to drop the ball in the bucket, and Hill picks up a big yard and putting the Rams' offense in really good position. First and 10 from the 12. Morgan in the shotgun, 28 seconds. Seth Morgan takes the snap. He's under some pressure. He throws over the middle. And so touchdown, Shepard! Dustin Fisher with his first catch of the day, his first touchdown as a Ram, and it couldn't have come at a bigger moment. There is a flag on the play. 
With 23 seconds to go, Seth Morgan delivers what could be the game-winning touchdown, but we'll have to wait and see what this flag is. It's 27-26, 23 seconds left. Flag's in the end zone, so that's typically in the area of some type of defensive pass interference, but we'll see what the call is right here. Came after the play was over, but I'm not certain if the flag had anything to do with any celebration or anything or what the case may be, but the Rams are at least offensively lining up to go for two because that would make it a three-point game. So it looks to be so a- I think they're asking the coaching staff, do you want to take it on the extra point or do you want to take it on the kickoff? So that will go on the kickoff. It's going to go against Malachi Brown. It was excessive celebration. Is that what it was? I think so. Unsportsmanlike conduct. Yeah, unsportsmanlike conduct. 27-26. Penalty on Brown there. And Shepard trying to go for two to make it a three-point game. And now we'll have a timeout taken by the Owls. That was a big-time throw by Seth Morgan. Absolutely. Why do you take that timeout now? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, you're going to need those timeouts. Like, you're going to have to get some yards in a hurry. And you only have one timeout. Oh, I don't know why you take that timeout. Not for two points. Yeah. But that is what the Owls elected to do there in 27-26, 23 seconds to go. It's not like this is to take the lead. This is just to add some points on. Either way, you're going to have to probably get a field goal at 23 seconds. But what a big-time play by Morgan. I mean, you could walk away from this game being pretty critical of him, if I'm being honest. There wasn't a whole lot of things that stood out. But when the moment was biggest, he came through. And I think um, that, that's a real positive for him moving forward and, and what this team could be. For him to establish that leadership role in the huddle with this team. Especially yeah. with, you know, number twos on the sideline. Everybody's yeah. probably like, oh, yeah. remember when we had that guy? Yeah. And he comes through and uh, delivers the drive there for Shepard to take the lead. The defense will have to stand strong. And, of course, the Rams would like to get this two-point conversion. Morgan looking for Jeremiah Taylor. Back shoulder throw incomplete. Houghton, good defense. He's been a good defender. He's been tough today. Yeah, only really got beat once. So the Rams come through with the touchdown drive to Dustin Fisher, his only catch of the day. And it could be a game-winning touchdown. And, I mean, that's a guy that – and he's Joey Fisher's brother, and, of course, he's been known as a blocker, a guy they put in, you know, in the goal line situations, and he doesn't get the touchdowns like Michael McCook. But <laughs> <laughs> Shepard needs a tight end. They, they've they been trying to establish that. Brian Walker, of course, gone. McCook is gone. Uh, so they have really haven't gotten the tight end the ball. I was going to bring that up to you at some point, Travis. And, and we well, know they, haven't the really, yeah, they really haven't gone over the middle that much. Yeah. Everything has, has been vertical and to the sidelines, and that, that's something that, that they've been missing so far this game, but it came up big for them in the fourth, so they saved the best for last, I guess. Yeah, and, and I mean, tight end has been a big part of this offense. Absolutely. You know, Alex Wetzel, Wetzel and Brian Walker making plays two years ago. Of course, last year Walker had a great season, so if Fisher can establish himself or Brian Jester, one of those guys, they're not really your typical size that Shepard's had at that tight end. This is going to make it tough to do with that penalty. Shepard's going to have to kick it off from their own 20-yard line, which could really set up Southern Connecticut to potentially get a game-winning field goal here at 27-26. So and this thing is have, far from over. Yeah, the Owls have two left. capable returners back deep, have Papalo and Martin. Mozick will kick it away. I wonder if, yeah, you just kick it out of Ooh. bounds. This isn't a bad thing, though, I mean, considering that you were kicking from the 20 anyway? I don't know. Did you get the ball? Looked like he put it out right at the 35, depending on where the referee's going to mark it out at. Wow. Moved but it all the way up to the 40. Man. But you had the penalty when it goes out of bounds on a kickoff, right? So it's going to automatically be. I, don't they set it at the 35? Yeah, I believe so. But I think they can take it where it goes out, too. Okay. So I was going to say, if, it, if you kicked it and it went out of bounds and it automatically goes to the 35, that's yes. not too bad in yeah. that situation when you're kicking from your own 20. Yeah. So it could have been part of the strategy, but I don't know if it was or not there. If that's not the case, if it can be where it goes out of bounds, then maybe not. I guess the difference would be five yards, though, so either way, it's not too bad. I'll tell you what, if you're a football fan, you're in hog heaven so far with this first game of the season. You've had high drama. You've had some physical run plays, some hard hits, some spectacular passes and catches. 
Now you got a drama here at the end of the game to close it out, a one-point game, fourth quarter, season over. You know, you get all your vitamins and minerals in your first game of the season. Feels like we're in a playoff game. It's only week <laughs> one. 27-26, 23 seconds to go. Keith Ridley in the Southern Connecticut State offense trying to get into field goal range. Ridley steps up, looks over the middle, incomplete. Throwing toward that sideline. Orlin Cruz is the sophomore kicker for Southern Connecticut. That time trying to go to Gatson. Gatson has had the missed extra yesterday. point, Travis, is the difference in the game yes. right now. I mean, Shepard would have kicked an extra point, of course. but Missed extra point, missed two-point conversion. Special teams plays are, are looming large here down the stretch, as they typically do. He's second down and ten from midfield. Ridley, under some heat, steps up, looks over the middle, throws an incomplete Anilio Pena of a heck of a break on that pass intended for Hetmeyer. The 5'8", 165-pound wide receiver out of New Britain, Connecticut. Sophomore not able to bring it in, and Pena, Johnny on the spot. We haven't said his name much today, but he is one of those guys that you can consistently depend upon, has been a solid defender during his career here for the Shepherd Rams. Redshirt Jr. had 72 tackles last year, 35 of those solo, and three pass breakups. 12.8 seconds. The snap is low. Ridley picks it up off the turf. Ridley, eight seconds, throws complete. Out of bounds goes Martin with 6.2 seconds. They're only at the 45. I don't think you can attempt a 60-plus yard field goal here unless Justin Tucker's on the sidelines. I don't, I don't see Morton Anderson or Sebastian Janikowski over there. So you do have six seconds. You do have time if you can get a first down to run the field goal unit out there potentially, but I don't know. They may go for the end zone. Shepard going to go into the prevent defense, and Ridley will take the snap. Four seconds, three seconds. Now there's not going to be time. This is the final play of the game. Ridley heaves it toward the end zone. Incomplete. And Shepard gets the win here on opening day, 27-26. And an absolute thriller between the Rams and the Owls. Dustin Fisher, the hero. Seth Morgan with the touchdown pass to win it late in the ball game with 27 seconds to go. And the Rams prevail, 27-26. Travis, what a game between these two teams. Coach McCook called it at halftime. you got to show what you can do facing adversity. And that's what this Rams unit was able to do here in the second half. They were down, but they were not out. They were able to fight back, make plays when they needed. we got a couple Rams that are down, but it looks more like fatigue and cramping and it's certainly understandable. You have a hard fault battle out there, a hot day, even hotter down there on the turf. There was cramps on both sidelines, but the Rams were able to pull one out here in front of this home crowd to get the season started off with a win. A quality win. I'm sure the coaches over there got a few more gray hairs after this one, but I'll tell you what, with all the new faces that you had out there on the field, a lot of new People coming in to fill some big shoes from last year. Couldn't be happier being able to come out here and get a big win in front of the home crowd here on the holiday weekend. And I think Southern Connecticut State's going to be much improved this year in the NE10. I mean, you talk about how they finished the year last year, winning three of their last five games. Were competitive against uh, the NE10 champs, New Haven, last year in, in their regular season game. So I expect this team to be much better this year. And, you know, just looking at it on paper, it's like, well, Shepard beat this team 48-7 to last year. How could this be close? We knew it was a completely different team for both these squads. As looks like Coach McCook's going to make his way over to our very own Dylan Bishop. And, Dylan, when you have Coach McCook, we'll let you take it away here. As Shepard getting the win 27-26, to and Coach McCook is with Dylan Bishop. So, Dylan, whenever you're ready. All right, down here on the field with Coach McCook, you you guys were able to pull it out at the end. What would you tell your offense before they went out there on that last drive and got that game-winning touchdown? Well, you know what? <laughs> Home, we just got to get the first first down and make some plays. And they did, and, you know, some couple guys came up big, but we're far from where we want to be. Uh, I think you're going to see a lot of things that we're going to have to make corrections this weekend, uh, and we're going to have to get better as we get into the next week of play. Um, it, these guys came ready to play. Hats off to Coach Godick and his team. Southern Connecticut, those guys played hard. Uh, they're a well-coached football team. They play with a lot of grit, and uh, my, I, I have a lot of respect for them, and we were in a tough ball game. How different from last year did you think you noticed this Southern Connecticut State team was from last year? Well, it was, they were different, and we were different. 
you know, we got new guys that are trying to figure out where they belong and what, what the role is. You know, and, and we've got mistakes. We made a ton of mistakes where if we, if we found a way to win, and that's what good teams do. They find a way to win. This is a big weekend here, first game of this new era. Uh, you know, Tyson Bajan, you have him around here for the weekend. You know, we're going out for the coin toss, yeah, doing Tyson his. Tyson and Joey, having Tyson and Joey both here, be able to kind of celebrate their, their roster spots that they have. Really happy for that. It's a lot of fun with that. But we do have our, you know, again, my focus is on this football team. I'm happy to celebrate with Joey and Tyson. But my, I'm more thinking about the sacks we gave up, how we didn't execute. Uh, we've got to be a better football team, and we got to come to work tomorrow ready to go. Thank you, Coach. Yeah. Congrats on the win. Go back, back to you, Nick and Travis. Thank you. Thank you, Dylan. Thank you, Coach McCook. And I think Coach McCook sums it up pretty well there, Travis. This is a new era, but, I mean, all that's in the past. you got to continue to execute with the guys you currently have. And those guys executed when it mattered, like like I said. And, you know, it should be an exciting year. But we'll get into the postgame show on the other side of this two-minute break. And we will wrap things up here from Rams Stadium. Shepard gets the win, 27-26 to over Southern Connecticut State. This is Shepard Rams Football on TV10 and WRNR-TV on YouTube. Hi, Crescia Hornby here. Larry DeMarco, broker of Modern Realty Results, believes he has some of the best real estate agents in the Eastern Panhandle. Agents at Modern Realty Results have years of experience and knowledge of the local real estate market. Agents within the office work as a team to provide quality customer service. We strive to always ensure client satisfaction through handling every transaction with honesty and integrity, all while offering competitive rates. Modern Realty Results is veteran-owned and managed. Please call us at 262-4222, modernrealtyresults.com. The Palace Lounge in Martinsburg is the place to be. Join us every night to relax and enjoy football or basketball games featuring either the Martinsburg Bulldogs, Shepherd University Rams, or West Virginia Mountaineers. We will have steak night every Wednesday, trip nights every Thursday, and now taco and margarita nights every Tuesday. You can find us on Facebook or call 304-267-7520. The Palace Lounge is located at 1350 Edwin Miller Boulevard in Martinsburg. My kids, you know I want the best for you, don't you? We need to have a conversation. End-of-life planning is no one's favorite discussion, but the relief of having everything in place when the hour of need arrives is a gift. Give it to your family. Plan ahead with us. Brown Funeral Homes, a leading provider of cremations, invites you to explore the many flexible options of cremation. From environmental considerations to the benefit of greatly reduced cost, it may be the perfect answer for your family. Online at brownfuneralhomeswv.com. Brown Funeral Homes, here for you. It's the post game show. As we recap the scoring, bring you stats and analysis, scores from around the PSAC and Super Region 1, the Division 1 Top 25, and the latest on the West Virginia University Mountaineers and Marshall University Thundering Herd. Let's get it started as we go back to the field and rejoin our TD10 broadcast team. We welcome you back here to Ram Stadium. Shepard getting the win 27-26 over Southern Connecticut State. Again, in the postgame show brought to you by the Palace Lounge on Edwin Miller Boulevard in Martinsburg. With your full lunch and dinner menu with daily specials and a clean, comfortable atmosphere, check out the menu on the Palace Lounge Facebook page. Shepard with touchdowns from Jeremiah Taylor as well as return man. Of course, we can't forget about him. Return man for the Rams today. Miles Greer, who has a punt return touchdown for the Rams. That was a big play. And then, of course, in the second half, Malachi Brown running one in for six, as well as the last touchdown there in the final few seconds of the game. Dustin Fisher, his first catch of the day, a touchdown catch, his first touchdown as a Ram as well. He's been on the team for a little bit as a uh, more of a blocking tight end slash fullback role, but having to step up and, and made a big play when they called upon, him, called upon him. Those scoring drive summaries brought to you by Paul Espinoza for State Senate, an effective, fiscally, fiscally conservative voice for the 16th District. Travis, uh, what are just your thoughts on this one as Shepard gets the, the great win there in a great hard-fought game? Like you mentioned, it was playoff intensity. Both teams came out 
first game of the season, so you're going to make, you're going to expect some mistakes. You're going to expect some miscues, some mistakes, some penalties. We had plenty of that, but when it came down to it, teams were able, both teams were able to step up and make big plays. Shepard was just able to make bigger plays down the stretch to pull out the tough win in front of the home crowd, but just. A lot to be happy about with both ball clubs. I know that's a tough loss for Southern Connecticut to have to ride all the way back home on that one. But I tell you what, they finished the year, like we mentioned, winning three of the last five games. They come out, go up against a very good Shepherd football team and play very well. They went out there and showed that they can go out there and make some plays and hang with a very good ball club. So they should be happy. And, again, you have this Rams team. They lost a lot from last year, probably more than any other team you could probably say in the PSAC as far as touchdowns, points, and yards. But yet that offense was able to go out there and make some plays. You're starting to see who's going to be the new cast of characters that are going to be getting to emerge. And you're able to see that with wide receivers and Taylor and Hill. The quarterback, Morgan, was able to make some plays. Fisher making the huge play at the end. So you're starting to see why this Rams team has been a top-tier program over the years despite losing Big name players, sometimes they're able to come back and find that next hidden gem, and they were able to do that today with being able to come and manage and navigate a a, a tough fourth quarter drive, game winning drive, and then the defense, they got their number called a lot today, but they were able to rise to the occasion once again at the end to secure the win for the Rams football team. So just an outstanding football game to start the year, and just hats off to both ball clubs for giving us an excellent football game to watch here on the holiday weekend. Absolutely. Let's get into our post-game stats brought to you by Bechtel Jewelers, West Virginia's largest Pandora retailer on Route 11 South Enwood, taking care of you like nobody's business. On the day, it ends up being Malachi Brown running 22 times for 94 yards and a touchdown, had the lawn of 26 yards, 4.3 average for him. Isaiah Russell gets a carry in there for six. And then Lech Powell had that one run when Morgan had to come out due to the helmet falling off, one carry for two yards. As throwing the football, again, the final numbers don't look bad, but at times Seth Morgan you know, was sailing some passes. There were some things that didn't look great. Playing but, cautious. Yeah. He's playing cautious. He just, I think he's it, playing it, nervous a Yeah, bit. playing nervous, playing cautious. Didn't want to be the guy that made the big mistake. But at the end of the day, when the game was on the line, he came through and, and delivered a great touchdown pass to Joey Fisher. The final numbers look pretty solid. 16 of 28, 233 yards and two scores. Uh, was sacked three times, so probably try to get the ball out a little bit quicker on some plays, but one of 32 on the day. Jermaine Taylor, or Jeremiah Taylor, excuse me, seven catches, 113 yards and a score. Malachi Brown, three catches, 17 yards. Barry Hill, two catches, 35 yards. Cordell Batten, two catches, 26 yards. Those were your leaders. In the receiving category, Dustin Fisher, of course, had a one catch for 12 yards and the touchdown. And on the defensive side of the ball, J.T. Comayal led the way with the tackles, 10 on the day, two for a loss. Jack Baxter had four tackles. And then Nathan Muley with three and Dante Harrison with four. On the Southern Connecticut side, Keith Ridley played pretty well. 18-28, 18 of 28, ended up going for 300 yards, passing 302 yards, and a touchdown. Had that 84 yard uh, play that added to that 302. And then Sean Martin, 16 carries, 52 yards, and a touchdown. Elijah Gray, 11 carries, 19 yards. Ridley, 5 carries, 28. Manning, 7 carries, 15. In the receiving game, it's Martin, 7 catches, 139 yards, and a touchdown. Papalo, four catches, 52 yards. Ganson, two catches, 71 yards. And Souls, two catches for 50 yards. Defensively, Fergora had seven tackles. Watson, five and a half. Dominic, Hassan Dominic, four tackles. And then Chris White with three tackles to lead the way defensively for Southern Connecticut. Travis, uh, overall, just you know some big plays throughout the day. Uh, what would be your electrifying play of the game? Electrifying play of the game, i got to go with the freshman, Miles Greer, 85-yard punt return for a touchdown to even the game up. That was in the eight-minute mark of the third quarter. To me, that was my most electrifying play. They kind of loosened things up and got the confidence going for the Rams sideline. Yeah, that was a big play there in that third quarter of about 8.40 to go. Shepard hadn't really done anything in the second half, and Miles Greer, Tied that game up, so I, I would agree with you on that. Collision of the game brought to you. I'm sorry, electrifying play of the game brought to you by Orsini's Home Store. 
not just an appliance store any longer. They're located at 360 Hack Wilson Way in Martinsburg or online or orcinis.com. What about your collision of the game brought to you by Cody's Auto Body? Collision of the game? There's no question about that. It has to be Hassan Dominic. I'm going to say his name right because I don't want him hitting me like that. I wouldn't be able to survive. I wouldn't have come back into the game. Got that sack at the 12-30 mark in the fourth quarter. That was a kill shot. I, I, hats off to Seth Morgan for not fumbling the ball. Most quarterbacks are going to put the ball on the turf. They get hit like that from the blind side. So my collision of the game, Hassan Dominic, I will say his name right from now on. <laughs> <laughs> collision of the game brought to you by Cody's Auto Body at 851 Wilson Street in Martinsburg. Family-owned, offering superior customer service and great pricing for a job done by experienced, certified technicians. Call 304 304- 901-4777 or visit their Facebook page. What about your good hands catch of the game brought to you by Kelly Allstate Insurance? There were a lot to choose from. I, it changed throughout the game, but the one that really stood out for me, Cordell Batten, the 21-yard catch. It was huge in the fourth quarter, fourth and 15. He stepped up and made a big play when the Rams absolutely needed it. He got upended on the play, came down awkward, like pretty much on his face and was still able to maintain possession of the ball and a big first down to set up a, a scoring drive for the Rams. So my catch of the game, Cradell Batten. Yeah, great grab by Batten. He had a few that you yeah. could nominate for the good hands catch of the game. But that's brought to you by Kelly Allstate Insurance. For all of your insurance needs, call Gary Kelly at 304-263-4596 or stop by 724 Lakeview Drive in Martinsburg. And then finally, Travis, our player of the game, Brought to you by Bodwell Insurance Solutions, a local professional will help you with all of your Medicare needs. Go to BodwellInsuranceSolutions.com or call 304-283-0864. Well, I would want, part of me wants to give it to Seth Morgan going out there, but I got a feeling he's going to get a lot of these as the season goes on. But I got to give it to my man, Dustin Fisher, the game-winning catch in the fourth quarter. Dustin Fisher, he's a player of the game. Yeah, you know, and all we, he all he does is catch touchdowns. <laughs> that's we, literally all he did. <laughs> we can we change that to the the Michael McCook Award? Right all there? he does. Yeah. We'll have to wait and see how the season plays yeah. out. But I think Dustin Fisher could potentially become an all he does is catch touchdowns guy. Which <laughs> hey, that that's not a bad, a bad thing to do. Yeah, that's not a bad name to have. Anyway, um, yeah, I think in that situation too, when you haven't caught a pass all day, and then you have to catch the game winning touchdown, like that's a lot of pressure to be in that situation and he obviously makes the play so you know it, it wasn't pretty but hey i think southern connecticut state's a lot better than they were last year and i think shepherd is growing they're learning it's a new group um we'll see what they can do next week at edinburgh noon kickoff we'll be on the air at 11:30 a.m for spencer dupuy our on-site producer colin mclaughlin back in the studio who you'll hear from in just a few moments Daryl and Matt Miller, and of course Dylan Bishop, our sideline reporter. I'm Nick Verzellini and Travis Smith, my color analyst as well, saying so long here from Ram Stadium. We'll see you next week, 11.30 a.m., pregame show, noon kickoff. Rams win it 27-26. to Have a good afternoon, everyone. Ollie's VIP Northside is the best spot to catch all your favorite teams. Join us Monday for Dollar Wings and Monday Night Football. Thursdays on the patio for the Cornhole Tourney. Friday Night Lights with Happy Hour Specials or Saturdays during or after the college games for Steak Night. Get a ribeye or New York Steak for just $26.95. Ollie's has great food and drink menus too along with 17 TVs to watch any game of your choice from anywhere at the bar or their outdoor patio and fire pit. So stop by and see for yourself today at 36 Veronica Drive in Martinsburg. That's Ollie's VIP Northside. We'll see you for the game. I'm Jonathan Bodwell, Bodwell Insurance Solutions, your local Medicare and life insurance agency. We are here to help you navigate the Medicare maze. We represent all of the major carriers, and you do not pay any more to go through us than if you go directly through a carrier. But if you go through us, you have a local professional to help you with all your Medicare needs, not a voice that could be in some other part of the world. Bodwell Insurance Solutions, your local Medicare agency. BodwellInsuranceSolutions.com or 304-283-0864. The Skinner family has been representing West Virginians for more than 50 years. We've changed the name of our firm to Skinner Accident and Injury Lawyers because we want to be clear about what we do. We represent people who have been in car, truck, and other catastrophic accidents. We're here to be a voice for the injured and vulnerable, and we take that job seriously with deep commitment to serving our clients wherever they are. Just Google Skinner Accident Lawyer or visit SkinnerWins.com. We'll treat you like family. We're here again three times in the past two days. You're where? 
Bechtel Jewelers. Look. Can mom hear you? No, she's in a diamond coma. Get her the pendant or I will. Hey, that's my credit card. What? Can't hear you, Dad. You're breaking up. It's going to take more than a crying baby to wake her out of this diamond coma. You're going to need a mega dose of jewelry from Bechtel Jewelers. W. Harley Miller Systems understands the need and desire for reliable and affordable smart home solutions. Secure your home with a security system and keep a close eye on your family. Automate your home with a Control 4 system and have smart technology work as one. Set daily schedules to control your thermostats. Push a button and set the mood for dinner by dimming lights and playing music, or just sit back and enjoy a movie in your own home theater. Put decades of experience to work for you. Visit us at whmsystems.com or call 304-350-1931. When will I be able to retire? How do I make the most of the money I have? How do I leave a lasting legacy to my loved ones? I'm Philip McCoy, financial advisor with the Marius Group, a private wealth advisory practice of Ameriprise Financial Services Incorporated. Call us today at 304-263-4343 to help you make the most of your financial future. Our office is located at 1270 Winchester Avenue, Martinsburg, West Virginia. Ameriprise Financial Services Incorporated member FINRA and SIPC. The Honda HRV, CRV, Pilot, Passport, and Ridgeline. They all have one thing in common. They never back off from a challenge. Available with all-wheel drive, the Honda SUV lineup has the performance you can count on and the capability to amaze. It's no wonder Kelly Blue Book's KBB.com named Honda the 2022 best value brand. CMA's Honda of Winchester, 3985 Valley Pike. CMA, moving lives forward. Based on 2022 brand image awards from Kelly Blue Book, visit KBB.com for more information. Have you been smoking? Uh, I can smell it. Hickory. I'm gonna watch you smoke the whole pack. Shut now and save at Orsini's today. Have you been smoking? Uh, I can smell it. Hickory. I'm gonna watch you smoke the whole pack. Shut now and save at Orsini's today. Welcome back to the Extra Point post-game scoreboard show here on TV10 and WRNR TV on YouTube as the Shepherd Rams get the win 27-26 over Southern Connecticut State. What a game that was, a very close one up until the end, and Derek Fisher gets the game-winning touchdown for Shepard in the final moments to get them the 27-26 victory over the Owls. Let's now get some scores from around the Pennsylvania State Athletic Conference, starting with some final scores from Thursday. It was 30-20, Clarion over Lincoln, 34-30, Fairmont State beat Bloomsburg, 22-13 was your final score between Charleston and Gannon, IUP defeated Ashland, 24-17 Millersville knocked off St. Anselm 33-7. Wheeling defeated Seton Hill 35-24. East Stroudsburg dominated Pace 62-9. Ferris State beat Mercyhurst 54-12. And then some final scores from today. Newberry hangs on against Shippensburg and gets the win 14-10. Assumption beats Cutstown 31-20. Duquesne is currently beating Edinburgh 49-7. And as you can see there, our score, 27-26. Shepard defeats Southern Connecticut State. Some games currently in action, only two of them as they kicked off at one. It's Lockhaven over post, 42-7, and Bentley leads Westchester, 19-10. To Tonight at 6 p.m., Slippery Rock will host Wayne State. Again, that's our Extra Point scoreboard show here on TV10 and WRNR TV on YouTube. I'm Colin McLaughlin wrapping things up here. Have a great rest of your week, everybody. You've been watching play-by-play -play coverage of NCAA Division II football featuring the Shepherd University Rams and the Pennsylvania State Athletic Conference. Today's telecast has been brought to you by Smallwood Small Insurance Group, W. Harley Miller Systems, Chris Miller and the Dutch Miller Automotive Group, the Marys Group of Ameriprise Financial Advisors, Rocks Local Markets, Parsons Ford, Skinner Accident and Injury Lawyers, Bechtel Jewelers, CMA Honda of Winchester, Brown Funeral Home and Cremations, Orsini's Home Store, Hagerstown Ford, the Berkeley County Health Department, Modern Realty Results, and the Mansion Ferretti Law Firm. 
TV 10 Sports thanks you for watching today's presentation of Shepherd Rams football. All rights reserved.